Welcome back to Mesh Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is currently February 29th, 2024, a real date they convince us. Let me tell you the real secret. They've made a mistake. This date does not exist on calendars, which means that this date will not show up on any parking tickets, on any crime forms. You could have purged today. If it's not too late, you can start purging out there and there's no consequences. I assure you, what are they going to do? When did this happen? made up date how's everyone doing i'm doing well it's a thursday night hopefully you are doing well as well the music is not playing anymore that's exactly everything in the right spot hey daria absolutely wild and <laughs> wild wayland yeah we're gonna be playing some wayland today we have a deck list of the week which i think we've seen sneaking in and off on this channel for the last couple uh weeks uh it's a really wild one unintended burden bully so we're gonna start with there for sure and we're gonna play some other wayland decks i think it feels like it's been a while that we've only been playing runner i don't know the last time we played corp deck oh no that's not true we played like a vovo deck maybe a week ago yeah maybe that's right hey lucille dutifully here for a thursday stream as always well i appreciate you taking the time and dropping in let alone at such an early time uh I'm really excited for the stream i quite like that hopefully you're doing well eh Hey Mushin, I made it on time today, excited Wayland, hoping we're cooking some runners. I don't think we are going to, but it does lead into a question that I would like to ask, because on the Tuesday stream, we played a deck that I thought was pretty neat. Now, admittedly, we've been playing a bit too much Arasana on the channel, but we have like a three hour stream, whatever, on Tuesday where we played this sort of like Maven deck. Now, I haven't been putting out enough deck dive stuff, just like, you know, pre-recorded gameplay. Does it make sense to you if I play a deck that you've seen on the channel before and put out like, you know, an hour and a half, doesn't have to be that long of a video with this, or does it seem like I'm just double dipping and you'd be like, I already saw this deck, so I don't care. Be honest, you know, if you think it's going to hurt my feelings, it's fine. I just want to put out content that people want to see. It's just like, I think this is cool and it would jam more games with it, but we've also played it on the channel. So should I move on and do something else? This is the issues we have. Please let me know what you think. Yo, Winnegon, Andre, we finally got the SF guide together. This one? 
Yes. Uh, Chenchling shared this to me, so I was excited to share it as soon as I can on stream. Thank you, Chenchling, and thank you to Wenigon and all the other names here. We'll be going through this during the news section. Mind you, they just announced Worlds on Monday. It's in San Francisco. And so a bunch of like local folks put together a pretty good guide. I haven't like fully read through it. I just scanned it through it a bit, a bit today um, uh, before the stream, and it looks really quite good. So we'll be able to share that out, which I think is awesome because there's a lot of people already planning their trips to Worlds this year, which is in October, as it usually is. Sunny D, how's it going? Best time, time for the best faction. Very unbiased opinion. It's weird. So like classically, Metropolitan Grid or Andre has been a Wayland boy for a really, really long time. I think I'm still a Wayland boy, but it's mostly like an op based thing. Like if I had to show up to an event, I'd probably play op sooner than anything. But yeah, no, I think it's the best one. And then how you doing? How's the job? Sorry, <laughs> job hunt. Best faction now. Final paycheck came in today, so I'm now officially not earning money. Ah, oh, still no good leads, but I'm very choosy, so I'm on, uh, it's on me somewhat. Hopefully it's going okay. I know that you were uh, between work stuff right now, and uh, I have no doubt you have a really good set of skills. So hopefully it's okay for as long as it is the way it is. Um, sometimes it can be stressful. Sometimes it can be just what you need. So hopefully it's okay, huh? Yo, Jenny, how's it going? Sphinxia, you have really good emotes. The thing that gets me... Oh, why do I not have YouTube chat on YouTube? Hold on. All chat? Oh, there it is. They come really poorly in on YouTube chat, but they come great here. They're fantastic. Hey, Sophie, thanks for your message, by the way. Um, Hopefully you're doing well, huh? Hey, gamers. I think a lot of people would. Like I said, I'm being choosy. I was willing to drop salary. Some other benefits are required for a company. I'd have a job lined up pretty quick, I reckon. Okay, it's good. You got a backup system. That's important. It's already March 1st here. I missed my purge opportunity. Kror, it's okay. Um, no, actually, there's no way to solve that. It's pretty far to the international dateline, right? How far is it to the international dateline? And does it run really awkwardly through, like, Fiji? I'm not purging any of my clicks. <laughs> hey, Frisbee, it's been a while. How's it going, everyone? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Welcome to Nearly March. If we purge today, does it still cost three clicks? It might, but you gain four credits, depending on how you do it. No vegan Wayland allowed? Well, no, no, no. We have... Uh, too much Arasan is a false statement. I'm with you on that one. If you got more to say, I think it's worth it's not that I have more to say. It's just like I want to play the same deck again because it's fun, right? And like you get better with it. I don't know. Please do a deck dive for them. Thank you, Carrie. The deck is worth a deep dive, no harm. The thing is, okay, so hear me out. It's not so much that I want to do a deep dive. If anything, we should lower the quality bar. Like we should just do a here's a deck, right? Because I think that's worth it. Like, I think the deep dive for the World Tree deck was worth it because there's a lot to talk about because it's a 60 card deck that actually plays really differently. But I think there's a lot of decks that were like, this is how what it works. Let's just show some games, right? That are not worth being super academic about it. And the Maven deck is like kind of on the verge. I can't tell if it's good or not, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I think the fact that we like our deep dive deck dives are a bit too overproduced kind of slows it down in some ways. We just got to put out garbage. <laughs> Oh, man. I think it's fine to do deep dive on something you've already streamed, especially on something you're really keen on. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. Plus two. Thank you. <laughs> hey, c'est du Ça va? Hey, y'all. How are you doing? Uh, Paul showed me... What is it called? Pagan. I talked about this on stream a couple weeks ago. It's worth knowing that it's just been announced that... I forget who, but some um, North American-based board game publisher is going to be putting it out locally. So you'll be able to get that sort of stuff closer to it. I don't know if either of us were like super jazzed by it, but I know it's a thing Netrunner players were like really into. I hate the stream when a cool deck ran into Hyper Glacier Grinder PE. Um, we didn't get that too bad. It's a really weird spot in Netrunner right now because there's not a lot of like competitive stuff. So I don't think it's just me. I've been watching other people's streams, but like a lot of the corp decks you run into are like, you know, like just nobody's playing PD. And I feel like a lot of times I just want to play my Netrunner deck against Precision Design because it presents a pretty straightforward as much as it has to be an aggressive problems that we have to solve. Maybe the fact is I just don't like breaking pharaohs or tree lines because I don't think it's fun that numbers go up and you can't stop that from happening. Uh, but yeah, right now you're dealing with the weirder stuff constantly. I think I've seen no HB at all. It is a thing. Glenn, how's it going? I think having a dedicated video read deep dive for a deck is helpful. It allows for others to reference the deck in a broader setting and context. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that is a good point. I wonder like how the streams are not particularly like curated. They're labeled. But they're not curated. So if there's a certain deck you're looking for, unless you can pick it together by what goofy face I make on the thumbnail and what the, you know, preview cards I chose to be. Uh, yeah, it's a bit harder. That is actually definitely worth something. Read the double dipping question. The games where the, you've had some reps that have a feel for the deck might be higher quality and getting a feel for it on stream games. Is, say it's worth putting in. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. 
You think if you're too enthusiastic, it's super rad to see you spend more time on it? Hey, your way works too. Okay, chill. Sick. I might try it out then. You can always purge. It is never N6. <laughs> hey, Jai. Morning, friend. How's it going? If I have a cyberdeck sandbox score, does the government give me money for committing crime? Uh, I don't think it's the government. It might be the cyberdeck's people. Because, like, they're invested in that. I'm down to watch more NR content. There's not enough out of there. There's a lot. There's a lot out of there. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there. I can't watch it all, like myself. Um, but it's, it's a good problem to have. Let's just say that. We're working on it as well. There you go. Even more. How many freedom decks did Bayo can end up making? You'll be fine. <laughs> That's true. Um, that is very true. How's it going, Kyle? Uh, yeah. Even Kiv too. But like, that's the idea is that like back in the day, if you watched Kiv, Kiv put out a video a day, but it was just like unedited, you know, like a 25 minute, not even a JNet game, always like an octagon game. And those were fun because they were like what you expect it to be just like 20 minutes and it'd be like, here's a game. The deck would be explained sometimes, right? Scratch my answer. If you want to do something on your channel, you should do it. Have fun and be yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you. My kid turns into a teenager in a little more than two weeks. For real. How are you feeling, Brennan? I'm playing sports. It sucks, but it's also so fun. I thought for a moment you actually meant like playing physical sports, but now I get it in context. Sports seems fun. I'm playing R+. It's a good and fair. Oh, man. I'm really worried. Not again, because I think your deck is going to be the deck list of the week. And it puts me in an awkward situation. This is, uh, mind you, this New York, New York City CEO. We're going to be revisiting this in just a bit after the deck close of the week because it was a pretty big event. People traveled for it. It's cool. Uh, but the problem is, uh, I don't want this. I, I don't want any part of this, man. I just don't want to touch this. And it's mostly this card. I don't, you know, there's a couple cards that just like really fire me up of like, I don't think this should be a thing we have to subject ourselves to. It's called Bonza City Grid. A lot of people really like it because traps are a fun part of Netrunner. But like for the uninitiated, it costs nothing, trash for five. Already we are in cursed territory. Cost nothing, trash for five. Okay, fantastic. Uh, install the root of HQ R and D. Okay, that's fun. Whenever the runner breaches the server, they access three additional cards. It's not optional. They're going to see more cards. When the breach ends, gain two credits for each time the runner access the card during that breach. So obviously it could lose you the game. That's an important thing to see in mind. Run RDC4. We usually take a core damage for that. But you also might notice that this card is a 15 credit swing. If you trash it. Because they gain four accesses plus they access this, let alone any other upgrades. Uh, so it's a 15 credit swing on a single card. Now, the only decks that play this are the sort of, you know, decks that are playing traps. So things like, oh, you hit a snare into another snare, into a third snare, into Jinteki PE damage, into Behold, into Oracle Think Tank, right? Like, the problem with this is the right play is generally not to play the game. You should just say, I'm not running R&D, you win, unless you have a pinhole threading, or you're on game point, and then they can't res it. I just think it's such a strange card that... 95% the right thing you should do is not interact with that server forever. And it's good. It's obviously good. It's just like, it's bad that it's good. It shouldn't be like this. I'm going to walk away. Uh, you can pinhole it. That's the only thing you can do, really. It's it's not good. I don't know. I don't like it. Not again. This is, like, this is not an attack. It's just like, yeah, it's a good card. Play it if you want. Oh, let me catch up. It's not as unfair as mana garming your voids. Uh, I think it is. Because the right play is often to charge the mana garment to the void. The right play is to pressure HQ. The right play is to make them spend cards to get HQ pressure. The right There's a lot of counterplay against mana garment void. There's arguably more cards that deal with mana garment void and more ways to deal with mana garment void that are built into every deck. Oppo Research is a fair card that Anoetic Void changed my mind? It's not. I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you know what I'm thinking, right? So, what about Oppo Research removed itself from the game after you played it? Because this is my, like, current annoyance about Oppo Research. Is that more people are playing it as an attritional road bump than they are playing it as, like, a cool play. Because you assume, obviously, R Plus playing it for free is, like, something else that makes these sort of play patterns affordable. But in most board states, Oppo Research should just play this for zero credits in the early game. Because it's going to cost the runner way more than it costs you a click and a card, right? So if this card removed itself from the game after you played it, you'd actually consider when you played it. Because playing it early game is very low cost because you generally spend Doctor at least one back in. 
And that's what it bums me about opera research is it just kind of played attritionally. It's not often played in a way that makes plays, right? It's not. It's often just been like, ah, here, have two tags. It's going to be worse than, for you than me. And I don't love that. Like, say what you will about hard news, of course. The fact that money can't beat this means that it can always be a relevant attritional play. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, I think the value of all this is going to change once we see some new cards because uh, the Anarchs seem to care about tags. So who knows how this is going to look like in just a couple weeks as soon as that. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sold on up anymore. Downvote the NBN deck. Don't do that. <laughs> I was very sad to get my run my loo against it. I mean, okay, but your argument applies to a ton of cards. D, sh try. Firstly, how's it going? Secondly, I dug way deep into the old Kevin Divine anthologies, and I didn't realize there was actually front bottom Ken Divine album stuff together, and it's been really sick. But uh, okay, everyone, take your shot at the worst card that the winning line is not to interact with it. And this is for fun. You, I think I could be wrong. You know, it's being me a hot punch, ain't it? Counter surveillance it. <laughs> yeah. Miss bones plus pinhold helps, but you're still eating so many traps. Uh yeah, no, no, they were they help, but like at the end of the day, there's a lot of board states where you just shouldn't run RD while this is on it. Because the chance, and obviously you don't know what's going on, but the chance of you, especially on HQ, where they can hold like two snares and a behold, like there's no way out of that. That's just gonna happen to you. So like it's not so much that the trash costume wands is messed up. That matters more for trashing it on centrals. Uh and then admittedly, yeah, once it fires once, but once it fires once, that can't be enough damage. The right line against tiered server is not to run that server. Uh, yes. I don't think I'm a big fan of big ice, but you're right. A lot of times a tiered server is not to run it unless you have a way to beat the tier. Once it turns off a server, it becomes a major liability in the Netrunner YOLO run. Yes, it does. I think that's cool. But I think turning off a central server versus a remote server. I feel like central servers is where the Netrunner game is fun. Maybe that's the biggest problem. It's like turning off the fun server. That's not good. It doesn't you add divert power and some hydrants in the deck. I do think that's a really thing, a big thing though. It's like I've seen people play Mwanza and there is a lot of strategy where you want to either destroy it, not that exactly that you can de-res it yourself. But there's a lot of decks where like I res the Mwanza early, it did its thing, but now that the runner is on four points, it is a liability and then all you do is install a different upgrade on top of it. Uh, and then you can trash it. That is interesting. It's cool that the corporation is scared of their own cards. Like that is a fun effect that doesn't really exist on stuff, but I don't like it. Almost like traces going away is bad. Yeah, I, I think so. Oppo definitely needs more text. Yo, Augustus, how's it going? I uh, We shouted this out earlier, but uh, when we looked at Prenix, uh, what's it called? Instagram account. When we saw the uh, all 30 throwing the ace with the, uh, the woolly mammoth on it. Yeah, it's so sick. Some neutral tag mitigation would be nice. Missed it at all. Yeah, I feel like right now the there's just not enough tag prevention in the format that allows that sort of attritional oppo to be like very much a problem for everyone equally. Are we shooting up here? <laughs> hey, Anarcho, not exactly. In general, yes. <laughs> I just noticed the deck name on this one. Centrals are only fun because remotes are comparatively hellish. Yeah, but Central's a slot machine. Like, let's not pretend we are all not wired in a way that is probably not good for us. You want to run R&D to see that random card. It could be an agenda, right? Like, that is... For what it's worth, baked inherently into the design to Netrunner is that you get to do a lot of like RNG pulls and sometimes it's like, oh, sick rips. Damn, I'm good. Like, I don't know. Running a remote server feels different for sure. Prenix incredible. Yeah. Yeah. They're really quite good. Uh, I'm excited to see more of Prenix alt arts. They're just really, really cool. They're very, very clean. I like them a lot. All right. Let's start here. Deck of the week. We have a lot of news to go through. Of course, we're going to get to that. But this is Bird and Bully. Uh, the name is a reference to one of the other uh, op decks that was like Rezzing Archers. I forget what it was called, Bird and Arrow or something like that. I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense. If you want to hear more from London, London was recently on a Bar Ram stream. I'll link that in the description where they play it together and you get to see more of it, which is great. Trias Model Byroids is kind of awful too. Yes, I agree. I agree. But Trias Model Byroids. Okay, so Trias Model Byroids is obviously awful. We've seen that be like a really, really toxic card. Uh, with like Ag Infusion decks at World circa two years ago. And I'd agree it is. The Trieste model Byroids, however, is a bit more flimsy. This is a weird thing too, right? Hey, Pat, how's it going, man? Um, is that there's a lot of cards like this that surprisingly make ice meaner. 
And I'm not sure I love those cards, right? Like Trieste is one thing. I'll be at Trieste is on Byroids and runner card abilities can't break. So you can always click through a Byroid. Like it takes a lot of work to make this thing good. The numbers on it are a fair bit more reasonable, but like we saw a bit of this recently. I know FixB was playing this, but when it comes to things like, um, uh, what is it called? Helheim servers. And then the OG version is like a uh, corporate troubleshooter. Cards like this that out of nowhere can suddenly make your ice unbreakable. And if the face checks can win you the game, I feel like it's never satisfying a Netrunner that you lose a game or win a game because a face check connects. Now, that's not usually because you're taking lethal damage from a face check. But the idea is that if you run into something that can trash one of your programs and you're playing criminal because you've won every programs and they just corporate troubleshooter you, let alone Zata City Grid has like had no no impact on any meta, unfortunately, or fortunately. And the game is just over on the spot, right? Like, I don't know if that is something I'm stoked about on either side of the table. So I, I don't know. I'm trying to always like reevaluate what things I think are fun and what are not fun. Not that my opinion is correct. But I feel like anything that just says like, ooh, ice is suddenly bad is only interesting when it's closer to something like B1001, which you can kind of play around. Like, I think B1001 is actually a really nice version of this because it's not that the ice suddenly like hit the subroutines hit, but it's like if you can create a, con a convoluted board mess, you actually have a problem that you need to solve. Now, of course, there are like poisonous B1001 recursion decks with like a blade of an HB, funny enough. Uh, but I like this a lot better. Like, I think this is a cool way to make some sort of like positional board lock card as opposed to this, which is just like, uh, well, this one's in the middle because it's like not very consistent. But then cards like Corporate Troubleshooter or Helheim that just say like things hit you now suddenly surprise. Like, I don't I don't know. I don't think I'm into that. Sandberg. Yeah, ITD department. Those are a bit more uh even, those are a bit more telegraphed but obviously people think they're rubbish too you're giving me so much ammo <laughs> you know dad doom man and i built infinite loot to try to discourage corpse from playing non-interactive spammy decks like thule it was really wild Ned dad is like that thule barf deck came out and like i know santa was grinding it i can think we're gonna play another santa deck today but it was like the worst meta for it unfortunately just because yes i agree that deck eats that sort of thing alive which is great trias bang super cool build around card I think it's way more defensible than the other ones. I think it's less fun than B1001. Uh, because Byroids inherently are a fun one to goof on because there is many ways that you can deal with them, but mixed bag. The thing is like it's like the exceptions that make it really bad. And we saw that. It's like, oh, it turns out there's a byroid you can't click through. Like just the existence of the byroid you can't click through it makes the card that's balanced by the fact that you can click through them obviously suddenly interesting. And this really mattered at Worlds again, 2022. What do you mean? Who doesn't love some good old Loki egg? Just wholesome board state building. <laughs> Synth DNA modification has been gross for me in the past. Synth is like a card that I think has a potential of being poisonous, but then it falls into the sort of issue like it is a cheap to trash asset that you have to protect at all costs. But I do agree. And I think we have played decks around this um, uh, in the past where it has been kind of reasonable uh, in Jinteki decks. There used to be a lot of H AP ice in hb for a while especially when we had byroids there used to be some apis in whalen with mouseless and stuff like this and it's one influence like this card's not bad it just fits into the weird camp of netrunner cards where it's like it's technically a win condition and you have to protect it and but then you still have to it's like peak netrunner second server problem it's like you still have to win the game which means you have to have a server that you're going to you know push anything into and then you still need this out in a second server and generally the decks that are trying to grind people out don't have the economy to do both of them so that's the issue. I think Sturgotic Resonator is also like a slightly better card than Elix because this is like, if you want to just grind people from value, this does grind people for value. But the Corp do sick shit with the hoops they jump through. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the sick shit is Sandberg or not. I don't think it is. Triss kind of got kneecapped with the gank nerf. Good readings. Yeah, for sure. Hey, here and not there, here Norden. That's probably not it. I think the mindset that there's a problem with minus to runner and only single minus to corp is only a byproduct of this card saying tag on it uh i'm with oppo like losing one action versus them losing two actions is that what i think we're talking about we cook we cook i don't think that people who want went tag me last week and felt the same way about b1001 <laughs> yeah but like you can still deal with it like b doesn't protect b self like it's very obvious the counterplay to B, as much as there can be creative board states where it matters. Like, Kyle, you know that more than anyone. Uh, you play cool B stuff. 
you know. Never needs effed up exploitable edge cases. I was so hyped when people were hearing about this seeing the deck at Worlds 2022. Oh, the Loki Ag deck? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people have unironically put synth in their decks. That's wild to me. Yes. Yeah. Unironically. I we've definitely done it on the channel to some success. I, I don't think it's tier one, but it's like tier fun. I haven't heard anything from the NYCO. I'm hyped for new segment. Yeah, there's some cool decks in it. Uh, Kato brought World Tree Woo, the list we published at New York CO and came in third. Like, not only is that a good placement, but I cannot believe somebody brought World Tree Woo to an in-person paper event and then like made top cut with it. Like, Kato, what the heck are you doing? That's incredible. That's really, really, really cool. Now, Sir Gothic, that is some good stuff. That's going to be a big card and I'm going to break it. I think you could do it. I think it's really funny if you do like, uh, this is really hard to make it good, but you can do Sir Gothic and Op and then you can like, there's combos where you Azef and then get this on the table. Well, you Azef a three coster and then this sees the Azef damage. So if you have a click left, it does an extra damage. It's pretty bad, but like usually it hits cards that match the faction especially currently in netrunner yeah and i brought a lou and pd like a weenie <laughs> how to go d <laughs> your critique of oppo is that it leads to strict value play as opposed to setting up an actual play yeah okay i see what you mean yes and i agree i agree it's just well the problem is like at the end of the day the fact that r plus can play it for free it's like hard not to just play it if you pay two for it not good for free why not just beat strigotic by playing nova oh yeah neutral's not a faction you're right Ah. Seems like a pretty generic opposition to operation cards in general, as they are all just action economy anyways. That's an R plus problem? Uh, I think so, yeah. I think that's mostly an R plus problem. But like, what deck are you mostly likely to get oppoed out? It's almost entirely R plus. Uh, until, I honestly don't know in what other deck you're getting R plus consistently. Or sorry, oppoed. Anyways, let's talk about this deck. Uh, we've seen this deck a fair bit on the channel. It's pretty cool. Barf Thule. Oh, that is true. That is actually, it's weird how the second <laughs> most oppo deck is Barf Thule and their economy is kind of in shambles. Uh, but that deck also like, yeah, you just imp through it. William, I'm assuming Kato and I played and it was an amazing game. I knew the deck by looking at it and I was running a near earth hub trap deck. Oof. That's a fun matchup for both sides. That deck is really weak to tag. I'm assuming you're playing tag traps and I don't think Kato has any cards in that deck to deal with that, which is really, really rough. I'm really excited for the new set to like revisit World Tree. Um, I'm hoping for some sort of tempo positive stuff. They won and earned it. Hell yeah. Let's go, Kato. Okay, so we've seen this on the stream before. Um, mostly it's the deck that's running all the six costers, which is really good for apparently everyone's playing Poison Vile Slap Vandal of some sort, at least on Ba's stream. I think Ba ran into it a heck of a lot. But we're playing the outfit, so 4515, uh, the coolest bad publicity ID ever printed. It will be leaving later this year. Excited to see what's going to be done in that space. But gaining bad publicity also gained three credits. So we have too many agendas. Just too many agendas. 12 is a lot. That's actually really, really high. Our density is closer to one in four agendas. Uh, normally we play around one in five when we're like teaching network fundamentals, but running R&D, running centrals, and mostly R&D because generally we put agendas straight from the HQ into the remote server. What do our remote servers look like? Uh, yeah, I think there's some changes that are recommended in the deck. I think involving Cordum and like changing Braun to a wraparound or something. I need to read what they are because they're probably worth doing. But the idea is that we can put all these ridiculous upgrades in a remote server, and then every agenda we score out tempos us incredibly forward. So firstly, we have the normal stuff. We have two Kana, which means we can score out stuff and actually make money. Because the idea is if you like score out with a two Kana, and then we have some of the best ice in the game, as much as bad publicity, you can get a Valenchow rest for two, which means you res it gaining a bad publicity. It doesn't ignore uh, additional costs. It only ignores credit costs. And then you end up getting another credit. So you actually end up two Kana a Valenchow on an unnice server for plus one credit which is really really goofy as much as bad publicity will come back and bite you uh we have malapert which is really fine the fact with this is you can threaten to always pull seamlesses and audacities you can't pull agendas if you could pull agendas with this you generally would you can pull rashidas uh a lot of power in it and the coolest thing here as much as i'm in some ways pessimistic is a rela salvatore which this card used to be quite a powerful card that was kind of defining by certain fast advance slash jam slash combo archetypes. And this is the closest we've seen to it in a long time. I think the last time Arello was featured on this channel is that R plus deck that could score out like four points in a single turn by windmilling onto a San San City grid. I think that sort of archetype is probably one card short of being really, really cool. Um, but whenever an agenda scored from the server, you may install any card from HQ, ignoring all costs. 
Now, you place an advancement token on it too, so this gives you a couple options. Firstly, you can just put the fourth ice, the fifth ice on R&D on the remote server for free, put advancement on it. The advancement doesn't matter, but who cares? Second thing you can do is you can put an agenda in the same server with an advancement on it, which means if you have clicks left in the turn, we've seen, like, uh, especially when you have four bad publicity and red cap is a 2-2, I think the last game we played against London, London scored four points of two red caps in the same turn audacity install like audacity something like that a seamless might have hit one of them but you can do it really really easily because arella puts it in with one advancement you score it out on the second advancement it's gross now the big reason why i haven't been excited for arella in a long time is that it has to trigger when you score your agenda so it happens strictly before the timing on hermes and then if you put an agenda in the remote server they can just hermes it back to your hand i'm only noticing that the guy in the background has like a monk haircut that's metal um that's okay. In some ways, maybe that's bad. In other ways, it's cool because you've turned off Hermes, uh, so that's okay. Uh, but that is the one thing that like Arella is a bit bothersome. If they have Hermes, you're basically just spending a fair bit of influence to undo their Hermes, which is not bad, but I think we're pretty good into Hermes anyways with Tucana. Let's just hope. Uh, that's mostly it. Our ice is really good and annoying. Nobody breaks Winchester easily at all. We have a single surveyor. It's only weak to hush, but you don't see a lot of it. And this shows you that we do want to stack tall servers because it's a big sentry, bad to boomerang as well. Uh, trebuchet is what you expect. Valanchel is what you expect. Boarding Charles is what you expect. The singleton brawn is wild. I don't think people are playing Atman 6, but this deck has so much 6 strength ice, which is hard to deal with. It's relatively hard to deal with. I think their suggestion is to cut a brawn for a wraparound and like play a third a spin doctor. Two spin doctor is strange. We have a standoff, I guess. I don't know if this is necessary. He does fire Arella. It fires all the other Tukan and stuff like that. It allows us to res the one of Archer. Uh, and we can sacrifice a two-pointer for Archer if it matters. I think Archer is in a weird spot right now. Uh, certain decks do struggle with it. The face checks are generally going to be respected because if someone loses to Archer, they also lose to Trebuchet. So I don't think you're going to get the face check surprise on it as much as you will in Alpha and some other stuff. Sandoff is Tukana Archer. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Is that that much better than a, a Trebuchet? Maybe. It does end the run, which is cool. Brand to Jinja. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have no regions. We could do it, right? That's wild. So what I'm hearing is that we want more falsely decks so that you can oppo for cool plays. I support this message. Hey, it, it wins events. Let me tell you. Thule almost never does attrition oppos to be fair for all the rest of the faults that the deck has. Yes, it doesn't. That one actually makes play oppos, and I do like that a fair bit more. I see a lot of alpha decks put up results with red capture, but it never works for me. Sequencing is always goes wrong. So what I like about this I think there's a lot of really successful outfit decks that we've seen for the last year, but a fair bit of them are kind of draw dependent, where if they draw the nuts, it's the fastest deck ever, but if they draw in the wrong order, they can be really awkward. And red cap is a big part of it, because you never want to score this out early, it's obviously really bad, but if you draw it late, it's a 2-2, that's bizarre. This deck is actually really good at printing its own bad publicity if it's, you know, pushing itself forward because we are resing our own ice. And largely the majority of ways that you're getting bad publicity now for decks is by resing your own ice, which is not something you have control over. So generally in the last season, you saw seasoned players, and we have a really good example of this in the can Nats footage. You'll like pressure the corporation in an early game a bit till they get to like two bad publicity, and then you'll slow down. And then you'll build up your multi-axis and because you know the red caps are going to get stuck in hand because you can't really do anything with them when they're four twos. They're terrible. And then once you get that fourth bad publicity, that's when you start aggressing and then you want to sweep all of HQ and then lock R&D and you can deal with the red caps. The big versions we saw were pun intended big deal decks and those are also decks that can just draw backwards and they just don't have plays because a lot of those decks were actually not even building remote servers barring the first two turns and then if they just draw poorly, they draw poorly and then the red caps do get stolen from hand. So it's bad. Uh, that's not great for you, but this deck is a lot better because it will jam out just about anything. You have enough agendas that you probably won't be stuck with red caps and anything else for better or for worse. But this deck does seem like it has more plays, which I value a lot more than holding an outfit deck that's just like, I hope I draw my big deal into Alice because otherwise I'm holding a whole bunch of garbage and I can't build a remote server. So I do like this a lot better, but sometimes the outfit can just like brick uh, a bit harder than other decks, but not that much harder than other decks. The big deal ones for sure. Archer's in a weird spot. He says knowing the weird spot is also called Patrick's deck. <laughs> well, London, how's it going? Congrats on the deck this week. Mind you, I shouted out London appeared on Bahram uh, stream. Bahram, yeah, we stream a while ago. We'll have the link in the direct one, like the actual stream with the timestamp and all that in the description. But if you want to hear from London, that's really great too. I knew Patrick would like this deck ideas. I'm a bit late to stream. How's it going? Tron, it's going well. How are you doing? And you can take on it to get bad pub. Yeah, uh, Radish, that's the big thing is that we're actually in much more control to get the bad publicity because we can go out and seek out our bad publicity ice. So we're not stuck at that board state where the runner face checks twice and then says, I'm not going to run until you're on 
you know, you flood up in HQ, which is good. It's good. We did see other versions playing like under the bus and other stuff just to like ensure that you're getting red cap money. And those decks were largely damage based though, as much as under the bus is relatively good into mostly an Anarch and Shaper meta. Uh, we don't see that much banner, I don't think, because a lot of the Anarch decks recently are not worried about banner. Updates at the top, you want the three spin version? That's what I was thinking. So yeah, minus one Surveyor, minus one Brawn, minus one Tucana, plus one Spin, plus one Hardman, plus one Rampron. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, like a Rampron's in a really good spot right now. I don't think you need another big chunky boy like Brawn. Uh, third spin seems great. Uh, Surveyor, I'm not ever sold on. It's just like not great to get early. It's not even that good comparatively in the mid to late game unless things got really out of control. And uh, I think it's the only card besides border control that's weak to Hush. And Hush is not that prevalent, but whatever. We'll make those changes. I think those are good changes. Yeah, we had a good game on Tuesday, I believe. Uh, we were playing the Raven version. That was Diogen's version. And it was a bit of a struggle because we were not very capable of breaking a lot of six strength ice as much as we were on Slap Vandal Poison File, which is like a really fun matchup if you have something well oiled. Terrence, how's it going? New Corp deck. This is ro loading really badly. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. I have some issues on JNet. Uh, this is not good. Uh, the outfit. So we're going to do minus one brand, minus one surveyor. We'll do Hordum. Wrap around. Spin Doctor. One, two, Kana down. Hey, can I ask you a question if y'all have this? I'm saying hi, but my whole brain is involved in numbers poker. I won't be paying attention. I think everyone's like super, super Bellatro pilled or Balatro. I don't know how people say it, but like the amount of time that you just walk into like a Twitch chat for Netrunner and someone's like, have you played Bellatro? It is pretty great. It's genuinely pretty great. It's so good. Cody has going. It's really good. It's really good. I have um, a Steam Deck and that's like if I'm sitting on the couch for a bit, that's always what comes up. Uh, it's pretty compelling. I'm always surprised to see how deeper it goes. Like the other day I unlocked a new poker hand. I was not expecting that to happen, right? It's it, it is addicting. Um, are y'all having this problem? If I go to a corp deck, what happened to tomorrow's headline? I've had this issue before. I can't play tomorrow's headline on JNet anymore. I know Ba had this issue too, because I was watching a VOD, but tomorrow's headline just does not appear as a standard legal card. Uh, and then if I have tomorrow's headline in a deck. Like, sometimes I can add it to the deck if I copy-paste the deck with it, but it says it's not only standard legal, it says it's not even casual legal. What's happening to Tomorrow's Headline? Did somebody accidentally ban it? Just manually add it? No, I can't. It doesn't show up anywhere. Right? Like, it's it's nowhere. I can't add it. They have to ball the gateway and see apostrophes. Uh, Jeff, how's it going? Which with the wrong one, like the the bad, apo there's two apostrophes. One is like this. That didn't work. The apostrophe. OK, hold on. Let's see if we can get it because I know I've imported it. Are there other cards where that's a problem? Maybe don't disturb me with Jinteki ID. Oh, God, you're right. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Oh, you're not wrong. OK, hold on. Uh, let's do reality plus. Like it doesn't show up. No good. But if I import it here, no, either. Copy the apostrophe, the NRB, and, and so what do I do? What's the other apostrophe? That's the other apostrophe. That's nothing. But like, I'd assume it would come up if I, it, okay, it does. Oh, that worked. Huh? Okay, so the problem is, if you go to JNet and you find a deck with apostrophe in it, Sometimes Diesel's unrecognized. Don't say it's Dizel. <laughs> okay, so let's find a deck that has tomorrow's headline in it. Yeah, if you search headline, it works. Okay, this one, right? So if we import this, we go action JNet. And we grab this. So it has the wrong apostrophe. Uh, and we go here. You see, this is what happened. Unknown. And then this is not even a casual legal deck. So apparently it's just the wrong apostrophe. And so if you add headline, that works. Okay, that's how you fix it for now. That's news. I'm finding out in real time. I know I was running into that. And I didn't know why that was happening. Thank you for pointing it out. It's times like this that I regret not getting a Steam Deck. They're relatively 
what did I just do there? Especially because there's a bunch of used ones on the market because people upgraded to OLEDs. Uh, they're relatively affordable. It's an absolutely fantastic machine. Time for Jaina to use NRDB OAuth and copy decks from NRDB. You used to be able to do it. You used to be able to import deck. I don't know if that's a deprecated feature or not. Oh, Blotcher's on Switch too. Yeah, I forget about that. That was pointed out last week. I bought the remake of Solium Infernum and it breaks my heart that a remake of Game What Made Me can't run on my computer. So maybe I need something new to take my mind off of that. I'm worried I'm going to like Blotcher too much. Patrick, try it out. Just play it for a bit. See how it goes. I'm holding off on Blotcher for a bit. My life is currently too busy to lose another week of it. There's been multiple people self-reporting for losing a week. Okay. Can it, it still works? Why does no? Why have you been watching me import decks like an absolute ludite and not saying anything? I regret getting a Steam Deck. Oh. Oh, yeah, Tarians, what you want to do is you want to sell it really cheap because then you can upgrade to an OLED one. Whoa, 419 still legal. What? I totally forgot about that. It's weird to see, man. I think it's 2018. Hey, thanks. You too. All right. So HQ pressure is going to be a legitimate issue. Uh, economy is a legitimate issue. We have a reasonably good economy considering we have too big to fail. So with this hand, we could like hedge fund Balanchow on HQ and then next turn score at a hostel, hopefully before Hermes comes down. The other thing is we can just hostel and just say, like, what are you going to do? Diversion? Uh, I don't know if this is great. This is okay. It's probably for me a thousand decks. Yeah, it's something like that. Steam Deck is great for long meetings at work. <laughs> it's great. It's great for meetings. It's great for productivity. Yes. It is a really cool device. What exposed upside is even legal? Uh, Amakua. That's enough. Amaku is enough, but just corporations bleeding money is enough. All right, I think we're going to draw once. Okay, so if we draw once, that'll be... So if we do hedge fund Valanchow credit, we want to protect the Valanchow, I'm pretty sure. If we do, because you have to respect that it's a trebuchet. You could face check into it with no breakers. You generally do do that, and that happens, I think we're okay. Uh, but if we do Valanchow credit, that means next turn we'll be on five. So we could draw once here. Otherwise, if that's the case, playing hedge fund was strictly wrong. We just want to score at hostile without anything happened. Is the console still legal? Uh, yeah, Zomba's still legal. It's just but it's just it's not very good. If you want to end a blotter addiction, you can watch high level blotter on YouTube and see that there's really only one top strategy. It doesn't involve actually making poker hands. I've seen some top players. I don't think playing top is my goal. Uh, R&D is a problem. There's a lot of agendas in there. Uh, but I've seen like playing high card as a winning strategy. You kind of have to play the jokers from my understanding. So we could do big to fail or we could do this. No. But yeah, there's still like nine agendas in 41. Then these hard. Jam the Malapert to eat the trigger. Oh, Jason, we could have done that. Yeah, you're right. It would be okay to get on the table because I don't think he's going to trash it. With the Malapert, it's a bit different. But as soon as we get an ice on RD, there has to be some respect. Draw. Like, you can't face check into that. I think we could put the Malapert out, but I think we won't put the Malapert on the remote server to eat like an inside job or a boomerang. Because this stuff gets boomeranged. That's a problem. I guess we credit. If the Malapert gets trashed, like, you can bankroll. It's only trashed for. Three credits with bad pub. And I don't think we're going to use it anytime soon. Yeah, the journey's more fun. I don't care about playing top tier Bellatro. And even then, I reckon they'll address it. My biggest issue is getting some Joker that scales with hands played that actually dying all the time. <laughs> bad publicity with Baya bands is really fun. Playing like aggressive criminal with Baya and Chezza into this matchup is really cool. The big issue is whether they have a way to break Valanchow. Because if you're on Shibboleth, it's like a nightmare no matter how you slice it. Again, nice. We did get nice. I think paying a credit here is totally fine. We have more money than we need. So in the scaling, the jokers are a little busted, especially things on multiplier multiplier without playing the cards. Yeah, I've seen that, like hoarding steals in hand and stuff like that. It's still fun. I think it's still interesting. Okay, uh, so if we don't res, they have a one and five. They get another credit on bravado. We're just gonna take some money. The face check on Valenjao is not that bad once you have one bad publicity. 
Is this Evan's list? Rory, I don't know if London is Evan, but it is a list on the front page. So maybe. Not running the Malapur. Big snare energy. Oh, I could have got a Rashida. How sick would have that been? How does it compare to Slay Spire in terms of build diversity and depth? It's way too early to tell. Um, I think you're a bit more reactionary based off of what you get, which I think is the same with Slay Spire, but I don't play like Ascension Slay Spire, so I don't know. But I've played hundreds of hours Slay Spire. I'm assuming at some point poker will be less exciting. Was Slay the Spire the first of its kind? I think it's like kind of wild. Falsified, guessing agenda, it's a Rashida, I'll res Rashida. I think it's kind of wild that, um, right? Like it's just a deck builder. That that was the first single player deck builder, if it was, because I think it was. Mind you, for those who don't know, the folks who made Slay the Spire, at least one of the, the two guys, was like a big Netrunner player. He was one of the people that started Stimhack for the real old heads. I think SDS wasn't quite the first, but definitely the first big one. I remember when it came out, right? Like it was like, oh, people are like, you really should try this. And it was uglier than it even is now. Dream Quest was first of the kind, I think. Buzzsaw. That's scary now because you can't face check into Trebuchet to Kobe. It's one of the big firsts, but others exist. Okay. Blotcher is just by getting bigger numbers, not enough levers to pull. Yes. It, it's really nice because it's like slot machine y because numbers go big and sometimes on fire. Okay. So. I was almost going to hit a draw. That would have been bad. Uh, so no Hermes so far. This is a turn where we get cards on the table. Uh, I think we do score out the standoff. Can they break Archer into border control? Who am I kidding? Standoff. So we could advance once. We'll probably dump two seamlesses on this, which is probably good enough. I think we just head fund. We might advance here. Numbers go big and something's on fire. You know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's it's how it is. If we advance this, we're weak to Hermes. We probably do advance this. I don't think we need a hedge fund with all these too big to fails. I think another counter is more important. It depends on what you mean by first, but there's been roguelikes, there's been card games, there's been roguelike card games, but there's not been anything quite like SDS. Because like, SDS is surprisingly simple. It's just well done. Chesva, find my trebuchet with your face. My name is London. Is Evan E. Bentel? Oh, I don't know. London is like a proper name, not a handle name. If not, you don't don't feel like you have to dox yourself, but that's a cool ass name. Okay, so one seamless for sure. So here I think we just jam out the next one. So we can res Malaper. I think if that's the case, we would always advance this once more. S res Mali. Score. What would we get to hand? Probably just an audacity. Ebalto won the Sydney CO, okay. Pay one, yeah. All right, well, we're on track and winning on two turns. My YouTube account name already doxes me. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, right, it's all there. <laughs> I should have figured that out. London's a really cool name. Very funny. There's the Hermes, okay. So we're looking for a bounce here. Running archives for a, a Carmen? Why are we running archives? Oh, we have bankroll. Sure, why not? Mutual favor for a Carmen. Okay, breakers are up. We have some bad publicity. We're going to take down the, honestly, the daily cast probably. I haven't seen any breakers so far that's going to really scare us. Like Buzzsaw Valent Chow is not great. None of these can be like really dealt with. Do we seamless on this? I think we seamless on this to keep a standoff in there. Wait, thinking. Because like, what do we do? We do seamless advance. And then we can reinstall with Hermes. Yeah, I guess we do. I think with daily cast for two credits, is that better? You win next turn, so you hit TCA, right? Oh, that's true. Do we win next turn? Yeah, we do, 100%. For a non- I honestly don't want to pull anything out of the deck. Like, the only thing we'd pull out of the deck is something they can't break. Which here would be a border control. Because then we can install the trebuchet of the border control. The trebuchet they break, Chesva boosts to three. They have to boost once more. So it only costs like functionally four credits. I think we get a boarding control. I don't like taking a card out of the deck, if you know what I mean. Yeah, in theory, they could like legwork through the Valen Chow and then hit the standoff and bounce R&D. But like for them to win, it's pretty difficult. We just have to, at least on the last click. That was not the choice I thought they would make. 
like we're on fast events here. The remote server doesn't really matter. Uh, we need seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm not gonna pay. Uh, we don't want a trashable in our hand. Seeing card games, and video games. Does anyone play Kingdom Hearts: Chain of Memories? My partner is a big Kingdom Hearts fan. I don't, I don't like Mickey Mouse that much. <laughs> I think Keyblades are funny. I think Nording is funny. Diversion. Uh, that will not stop us at all. Because you lose to the audacity in hand. So you know this is, you can't just, you have to deny a lot more money. Fire all. So we lost, they lost two. Unless they diversion 1.5 more times. Yeah, we can score out on one credit. Earthrise. Ah, bummer. So they barely touched centrals. Like they did not get a lot of accesses. A lot of that is the ice is really scary and buzz onto Valenciao is not great. Uh, Atlas, we do server two. No. All right. That was pretty straightforward. Good game. Thanks, you too. We had scary ice. Like that remote server was legitimately difficult to deal with. Things like boarding control are the best ways around. The Malaperts were relatively good. Like getting the uh, the one of audacity in hand is super important to close that out. Hey, cheers. Uh, I think they're on the last turn for sure. Like you just have to go for the play. Like their best line there is not for the diversion, which has no impact on the following turn. But if you go for uh, an a run, there's a chance you hit a small agenda. We had one agenda in hand. Then you bounce the border control because you know what it is. And then you run R&D. And even then, right? Like you have to get rip here, rip here, rip here. And then it's really still very difficult. So it is what it is. I just replayed Chain of Memories on our Archipelago randomizer. It holds up well. It's even more fun when you have to try and make garbage deck work. I don't know what half those words mean. Oh, they'll pay for this. Name a more evocative scene in video games. Someone figure out how to make a paper card game that feels like playing COM. What is Chain of Memories? It's a DS game? It's a Game Boy Advance game. It has a rating on IMDB. It's hard to tell what this is from a distance. I can't tell what it is. It's a GBA card game fighting game in Kingdom Hearts universe. Like, do y'all play the Mega Man ones? Like the grid-based Mega Man fighting games? They were like kind of deck builders. They were fun. Uh, Corp. We didn't do any of the cool pop-off stuff. We just had like two good pieces of ice. Maybe this is because we cut it too common. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. The best thing about Kingdom Hearts is that technically though, it's char through its characters and the characters in Dead by Daylight, technically Goofy could be a Silent Hill protagonist. Wait, hold on. The best thing about Kingdom Hearts is that technically through its characters and the characters in Dead by Daylight. How do you get from Kingdom Hearts to Dead by Daylight? Also, I don't know what Nording means, but it is the funniest verb that I have figured out from the Dead by Daylight, not Dead by Daylight, the Kingdom Hearts universe. So my partner and I finally picked up my Arkham Horror LCG and played our first game. David, how'd it go? Revised core set? On that note, this came in today. Not the campaign box, Canada. Not the campaign box, Canada. Mega Man Battle Network. Yeah, it's released on Steam. Those were good. Those were kind of fun. Hey, Nack. Hey, how's it going? Best of luck. Have fun. I'm sad the standalone Gwent shut down, although to be fair, it didn't when we playing anything. Yo, the coolest thing about Gwent is how they did animated cards is damn magic. It is absurd how good their animated cards are. If we draw another piece of ice, this hand is good. I'm going to keep it and hope that the spin doctor like fixes it. Like this is dodgy. I get my home like Vell stuff last week. I think I'm still trying to find a story in like North America in um, us across the border that has hemlock veil, but it's like sold out everywhere. The game takes place in Maine. So obviously it's sold well around Maine. But yeah, the animated Gwent cards are like unbelievably good. Unbelievably. Hemlock time. It's not. I don't have it. I just have the investigators. I've built two decks so far. I'm surprised because the deck I thought was bad was actually good. And then the deck I thought was good was actually bad. And I'm actually thinking Wilson Richards might be fun, even though I think he's the boringest thing. I have an NYC. That's a bit farther. They have it, but they just sold out, right? Uh, Opening HQ here is is but like we're just gonna have to survive this turn spin doctor will make the density on hq lower yeah i'm not losing a spin doctor 
I can hold a campaign box for you. I appreciate it. I just, I'm not going to get into New York City soon. Portlandia has it on their site. I don't think a lot of those companies ship to Amer uh, Canada in a good way. I'm going to res this. This is super cursed. Don't do what I'm doing here. Beans. <laughs> like, that is a risky line. That was the one good hit. As soon as you do this, like, you run HQ multiple times. At least if Knack does that, he's not setting up. Ask the NH crowd. They make it down to NHCO next weekend. Then make it down to NHCO next weekend. Oh, yeah. It's not the worst idea. The thing is, like, it's out in Canada next weekend. That's not a reason not to go somewhere. That's a good idea. Yeah, two weekends. Yeah, because it comes out here on the 15th. Uh, we have to res this. This is, like, the max punish for playing into Anarch. By far. You're not getting to NYC, but I heard rumors you're getting somewhere else, which is close enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, I am for sure. That is actually happening. Um, it was on the, the what's it called list, the, the bucket list for a long time is uh, what's it called? Mansion Runner. It's happening. I uh, did the deposit and everything. This is basically the line I took for you in Raven game and you sniped a hostile was about to jam on Tucanas. Well, Knack is equally good. I just tried to run through it by memory, but the connection between Dead by Dale and Kingdom Hearts is looking and convoluted and I have to go through research again. Please don't research it that much. Okay, so quickly, how quickly can Koshiko deal with the server? We are only five credits, so we're probably too big to fail. We need ISAB HQ. Winchester will be quite enough. And then I think if they go hard on Arella, we're happy with it. So I'm going to put Arella in their mode server. Our obviously R&D density is pretty bad, and that's a really nice way to get Hoshiko up. Isn't anything involving Kingdom Hearts convoluted? Yes. Getting Rara the same week as Hemlock? Yeah, I guess so. That's a lot of card stuff. Sorry, David, I don't know if you responded how your game was. I might have missed it. Revised core, and we got through the first scenario. Seems fun and straightforward. It gets more interesting, that's for sure. Do we want to shuffle back Rashida and Spin Doctor? Yeah, this stops them from getting a Hoshiko flip. I think we're going to. It's something worth contesting just because it stops us from extracting. Uh, there you go. That's why we do that. So it's Norella. Uh, it's trash for five. It's a bit much. We'd be happy if Knack does that. I don't think Knack can afford this. But we wouldn't push out behind just a border control. Like, we'll put a trebuchet in front of it, and then that's a good survey. I'll do the research for next week or drop it in comment. Thank you, Brennan. I'm not sure how. And I would know. We're a DBD household. All right, R&D. Again, this is a good access. There's a lot of agendas in there. We trash a Rashida. Okay, so we're drawing an unknown. Be cool, be cool, be cool. Okay, so here we can... I think if an archer hits, it's really bad. The question is, where do we pull what? I think we want a Rashida. We can score the standoff. That's probably better because then the archer's online. So I think we do trebuchet. Uh, I'm too late to be sad about Gwen shutting down. On Etsy, people sell, obviously unofficial, but like full play sets of Gwent cards. And they're really pretty. I think it's the original Gwent from like the game, not like the Gwent standalone. So it's probably slightly different rules because I know they rebalance the rule set on that thing a fair bit. Uh, but it's a really cool present. Even for someone who's only played a bit of Gwent. Um, okay, trebuchet on R&D. Archer and server one's okay. We definitely want the trebuchet here sooner. If we just score at the standoff, wait, if we score a standoff, we can use Arella to get, oh wait, that's how you do this. That's how you do this, Andre. This is what it's for. Why are you not doing this? We'll do standoff first. Score standoff on Ralph. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I would score standoff, treb arch, install R&D with Arella. Yes. I'm going to put the trebuchet on R&D, I think. So trashing the leech or the cleaver is pretty important. Otherwise, it denies us five credits, which is not nothing, but we have most of our stuff rezzed. I took a look at them. They look amazing, but I love the gameplay of the standalone one. Those kinds don't simulate it. Like, they, you just play Northern Realms win. Yeah, I think it's different. So here we'll put the trebuchet on R&D. This should hold out enough while we put Archer on their mode server, but that's the idea of Varela. I, the game is lacking cards like this. Back in the day, we had team sponsorship, but a card that says when you score out, push yourself forward and encourages scoring out. As much as we complain, agendas can be tempo positive, and that was like a big sticking point in Netrunner a couple like years ago, looking at you, uh, System Gateway. It's really cool that there's cards like this that like, you know, make you want to score out even small agendas. Because right now the game has uh, like a huge amount of small agendas and nobody has interest to play. A fair bit of that is Hermes, but also... I don't think Vera Ivanaskaya or whatever her name is is doing it. All right, Hosh might take a turn off here. Uh, Banhar into Archer is pretty good, actually. 
Banner into Archer is really good. That's okay though. It's still four damage and we can pop a border control. The border control is still reasonable. So I think we're going to go for it. We'll do server one. We'll do Atlas first, Trixie, and then we'll do two Kana. We might score an Atlas without counters. I'm not sure. Card draw spies were OP as hell in Witcher Gwent. Well, you could just see what they're drawing, I take it? Can't do it. I've, I've played like next to know the Witcher. I don't actually know how Gwent works. I played the standalone Gwent game. It's cool. Again, animated cards were gorgeous. I don't know. How do they do them? Like genuinely, what was the technology behind the animated Gwent cards? Like we have to open YouTube videos to get to this, but they are unbelievably well animated. And it's not like just 3D. It's like 2.5D 3D. Like, look at that. They're so good. No, this dunks on Marvel Snap. And like, this is a simple one. And it's like, there's a bit of 3D to it. Like the way this animated is not just straight 2D layers, but the team they had working on them were so good. Like you can look at these for days. They're, they're fantastic. Marvel Snap 3Ds are, they are value. They're not always right. Holy moly, remember Vernon Roche, that art slaps? Live 2D. Yeah, I don't know. But like whatever team they had working on that is like absolutely incredible stuff. Okay, so now all we have to do is get something in front of the archer. We're on one bad publicity. So what do we do? We can use a relative to put red cap in here. We can use Takana to get a bad pub ice. I think this is all fine. So I'm just not going to think about it too much. We could greed the Atlas counter. I'm going to try not to. So this can be quite expensive, actually. So ideally, huh, what is the order here? It's a VTuber animator thing. Huh. We might actually just want to get the red cap. So Tucana. Getting a wrap around means that the archer is safe. That's the cheapest one. It actually only costs us one credit. I think that's fine. All the other options are a fair bit more expensive as much as we get bad publicity. Like Valenchow costs two to res, two to install. So we pay one for a Valenchow. That seems reasonable. And we want the bad publicity as much as they do too. Choose a card to install here. I think we go for Rashida because I think scoring out the red cap is like kind of butt. Rashida's 4-2 red cap. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Better than, yeah. Yeah, so they did a whole bunch of community live stream stuff I was watching, but I don't know, like, if they, there's, there must be a good article about here of how they did them. But, like, the card arts are absolutely fantastic, especially with, like, nature effects, like fire and snow and stuff. Like, like that animation's good. But, like, you see the head turns and it actually does turn. It's not a flat image. Like, the nose moves over. Like, there's a 3D rig in here. But, like, having this on a card that you play in a game is absolutely incredible. Like, like look at that lantern. It actually moves in 3D space. That arm. Oh, it's so good. It is so genuinely great. Sorry, there's a game going on. Okay, so we have to res this. We can't let free access this here. Banhar's on HQ. So this is either three net damage or you can break. Uh, you can break relatively cheaply. We have one Mavirus. Yeah, man, the Gwent is so good. They have no hardware, but the thing is, like, if they don't break it, they take a net damage, so, which is kind of fun. Imagine that effect on a net space cards. Yeah. Hit a moshing sick. A Neuromancy era is my favorite. The compositions and some of the genie cards are so hard. Is that, like, a Gwent era? Spin Doctor. Okay, if you want trash, that's all your money. Premium cards even had sounds. Damn. 2.5D animated Unity. Hot damn. Yeah, like, I would pay good money to like be able to take a course with someone who did that to teach how to do it. I know I've seen YouTube tutorials of like how to animate, like the people that do the sort of like splash screens you see from like League of Legends, but these are like literally 3D, they're different. A lot of the League of Legends ones aren't 3D. They're like the sort of stuff that we do on the channel to some extent. Okay, so HQ is a soft spot. They're getting four credits. So the red caps in hand are pretty good. If scoring out SDS manually would be pretty bad. Trashing the echelon would be pretty good. So that's a worry. NSG hire me. <laughs> Animated Renfi is excellent at as, as L, as hell maybe? Is that a channel? So if we do too big to fail, we can jam red cap. The red cap will be a 3-2, which is honestly good enough. And then we can trebuchet HQ. I think that's a fine compromise. Because if this gets rezzed or the R&D gets rezzed, we score it out. Not that. Uh, we score it out and we can actually like score a couple in the same turn, I think. If we top deck a seamless. 
Because that's the thing. If we top deck a seamless and we get to four bad publicity, which is just one of these being rezzed, we do seamless score install this advance. In fact, you don't even need seamless. You do advance, advance, score. Like we can win. Well, not next turn because it'll take us to six. But very good. Very, very quite powerful. He's on nine credits. Another moshing, huh? Yeah. Ooh, Ma, that's impactful. Boomerang on R&D. That's nice. It's going to put us on four bad publicity. So we just wanted to hit the hedge fund. Now, admittedly, if you hit an agenda here, you're forced to steal it, which saves us from Ma. The downside to having 12. But now, like, red cap into red cap goes hard. Like, really, really good. Please steal an agenda. We have the one agenda that has an optional. We got lucky. We got really lucky. Okay. So what do we want to do here? So we score red cap, we do advance, advance. Then we can score another red cap, we do advance. And then we can jam the SDS drone deployment. It's so wild. Now it might be right just to go from this red cap to this SDS. Let's be honest. Like there's no way it doesn't start with this. So let's do Tucana. We'll just get something on R&D. What's the cheapest thing we have? Wrap? Yeah. If we had a Malapurd, we would definitely go for the Mavirus here. Choose a card to install from HQ. So here we can install a card in the remote server. It's the regulatory capture. We can score it out and jam another card. If it's the SDS, though, we can't score it next turn. So we can score the SDS and advance it once and be able to score it next turn, or we can score the red cap from hand. What do you think is right here? I'm not actually sure what we want to jam in. The red cap in hand will be weak. Could win next turn with SDS. Yeah, that's the best part about it is the SDS could win. The, red, the thing is, if we score the red cap, we score the red cap and put the SDS in the remote server, but we don't win with the SDS. This just looks like the win. So they have to figure out how to get through an archer twice, which is on the verge of possibility. They're going to start with four credits unless they mess up their Hosh value order, which they shouldn't. You can mind you lose a credit to Hosh first, then do daily cast if you're not familiar with that interaction. Oh, they actually were on one credit, so they're going to lose the money no matter what. Cool. This is where Arella is bonkers. Like installing a card and putting advancement on it clicklessly is worth so much. And inherently in Netrunner, like a lot of times you scored one agenda and that's it. Like that's your turn. And this is the opposite. You score one agenda and then you have a scoring window the next turn and a scoring window the following turn. Like every turn for the last couple of turns, we've been scoring out agendas and it just is nonstop here. So funny enough, because they boomerang this, the Valanchao is live on the run back because Banhar is not whatever you want. It's the first encounter. So they're going to take one end damage here, but then if they run it back and pop the, pop the border control, they might be able to get back in. Fire all. So they lose a strike fund. Oh, worst hit. Oh, okay. So they're not going to board it. Okay. So they actually can't get through this. So this is unfortunately where the bad publicity catches up to us. Because if we res this archer, we're going to do it no matter what. But now they have to break this. They're going to use a whole bunch of leech tokens and then pay their four by publicity. Then they break board control for one. Then if we crack it, they can actually go back relatively easily. So I honestly don't think we board control here. Uh, we probably just score out the red cap next turn. Yeah, the boomerang is really, really smart. Notice how they use this whole entire leech. That's the play around SDS. That's smart. You don't want to split them up. You want to use one first. Pump for RWR, also sad the meta's changing because it actually looks good in, to many meta runners. Th oh, this actually looks good. Yeah, maybe it'll get better though. <laughs> it looks like they're printing another Valen Zhao in NBN that does cards. Like we've seen that in the spoiler. Okay, so thinking here. So they have to trash one of their programs. If we crack the border control, uh, they'll run back. They break the archer for... It's kind of expensive here. I think you use border control. So if we crack the border control, they have to run back. They boomerang through the Valanchao, we'll probably gain two credits. Uh, then they hit the Archer, they break it for bad publicity, but they're actually sort of leech counters. So if they run Archives, they'll be at four. So they probably run Archives and then run this because the Archives run gives them enough counters to save, what is it, three credits. I think we could use the border control here and then we're just hoping that we win off of um, Red Cap into like Hostile. I think it's doable. Yeah, okay, whatever. It's a bummer too. Like they played really well. If they use the boomerang on the first run, not only do they not have Banhar, but like we could strand the boomerang, which might not matter immediately considering how the game's going. I'll end the run there. 
Now, the bad thing, too, is once they get in here, I believe they can maw, right? Because if they don't trash a Rela or two Kana. We also have to remember we get two Kana, so when they score this, we can jam. But if they maw the Rela, we lose the red cap. We're in a really bad spot. Or Malapir would have been good. We would love just one more Audacity. Or, uh, sorry, a Seamless Launch would have been good. So here, they probably like run Archives. They see their Maw card, get two Leech Counters, then run back. I think that works out well for them. But they have the money to do this. They have nine credits. Four bed velocity is a lot. So let's see if they challenge it. Maybe we greeted the SDS. Yeah, maybe we did. Maybe we should have just done double, double red cap and installed a Tucana. They would have to run their Tucana and then we'd be in a good spot. Uh, but losing the SDS to Maw is like going to be an inevitability. For what it's worth, the SDS here is like kind of okay because clearly they have no cards. And even if they trash an empty leech, like that still hurts them because they need a lot of leech counters for trebuchets and valanchows. Malpert ought to be able to pull agendas. <laughs> It'd be really, really good if it could. It'd be pretty gross. Yeah. Like the power level. Oh, they didn't run archives here. This is actually a fair bit more expensive for them now. So we're going to fire one of these. Red cap, red cap, two kind of is a decent line to force remote run. Uh, yeah. Oh, they have more money than us. Well done. I think you should install the SDS to keep it safe and two kind of is a boarding troll on top of S1. But, like, but if they know the list, there's no defensive upgrades. Oh, and Tucana to border control instead of the R and D. Yeah, maybe you're right about that. A boarding, a second border control is is really really problematic. Yeah, that could be good too. Want to see Sansa and Arella Malapert seven point internal combo? Uh, uh, yeah, it happens. You need game changer. That's a lot of money. So we want to keep the red cap. It's a 50 50 on what Ma's gonna hit here, of course. In theory, you should steal the agenda. You should maw first. Now you don't know what this is, but if you maw first, we don't like we can respond to this. They have a click left, so they can run archives and win. What do we do? Do we ice up archives? Like this is where maybe doing it in this order is good. There might be something cooking up in that direction internal. Ooh, cool. I think Warlock was cooking something. So if they, you know, 50-50 and hit the red cap, we lose the game. So I think we put Hordem on server one. We don't have a lot of money. Uh, boarding Troll is fine, too. All right, 50-50. They can run Archives this turn. They can also run HQ. Okay, so they're not trashing this, so we get mod. Shit. Sometimes it just be like that. What? Come on, really? Yeah, good game. Damn, uh, last turn. Last turn, I didn't know whether I should have done reg cap into reg cap and then just put in the SDS or try and win on this turn. Yeah, the hand here was one reg cap, one two kind of hoping for a reasonable maw or could have maybe, yeah. But it takes me to six. Yeah, the other option was to get a Hordem in Archives, which is like pretty kind of shows you that there's an agenda in there. Yeah, yeah. With BP and Benhar, you can't defend Archives. Gotta hope we're 50 50. We could for this turn and then hope that we chop decks a Spin Doctor or we won. Oh, yeah, it turns out that was gonna happen. But with three Spin Doctors, with one Spin Doctor? Oh, there's one in the bin. Yeah, with one spin doctor, you're right. That's not right. Exactly. But it would have saved us from Maw. So it might have been okay. Yeah, it still might have been the play because like it played around Maw. It gets an ugly agenda in server one and then we probably just don't do anything with it until we draw seamless. We're obviously too seamless. Because if we did red cap into red cap and then we got another two kana trigger which is whatever but then we got into here the sts i don't know if knack runs it without advancements and then we wait until we like draw a couple seamless uh yeah Burger archives for last click run then you have three draws for spin 
Yeah, but there's only one spin in 26. So I think the odds are better that you just hope it misses the 50-50 and then you play for something to put in the, to put the red cap in hand, right? Like the 50-50 on HQ Ma is much better than the three or yeah, three draws for for the doctor with one in 26. If it was three in 26, yeah, maybe. Thanks for the game, eh? Yeah, almost had it. <laughs> almost had it. I wonder if we defended centrals a bit too much. They catch your hand. They played well. I've been noting that the player count on Jaina has been going down during Thursday streams because all the regular grinders are watching instead of playing. I don't think it is that. I think the numbers are just lower. It is pretty low today, uh, but numbers are generally lower uh, between sets, like the new sets coming out. So a lot of people take a break because they understand like I'm going to be playing more later. I think also like I'm not following it too much, but the grinders like I think Fight Club is slowing down a bit. Like there's just less teams, so there's less people out there grinding, but I don't know if it is. If it is, that's I'll take the flattery, but let's do one more and then we'll do some news. These uh, games are fun. Wayland's fun. Like that's a cool thing. Like we still lost, and it's still a fun game, right? Like we had a lot of decisions to get to that point, and the ending is still exciting. But like that's the cool thing about these sort of decks is they're generally you do cool stuff. I'm more off topic. Chat, everyone, please go watch Cactus. What the heck did you just write there? Two on the biggest screen you can. What's Cactus Two? Jay, <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that is. Oh, Dune 2. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Is that out? Hey, Tron. What the heck is Cactus 2? Silly level? Uh, I'm doing Deck of the Week, so it's, it's on your call. I think the last time Tron bodied us, we were playing the weird Atalist from one of the teams. And I am pretty sure Tron was playing the as list, which was also from that team, which was pretty fun. So we played the deck against the deck. And I think as is like kind of a neat call for uh, the fight club tournament because it's like somewhat flexible and it's not weak to like rig shooter. There's a fair bit of that going on, I think. Deck of the week brings a healthy amount of silly. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Sometimes it's sillier than others. Oh, Tron. It was called out as a silly deck. Oh, it's Steve. 2018 again. Where's 419? I watched it with a mate last night and literally within the first five minutes, I was like, yo, this screen is way too small. I would believe that. Jinsei has been trying to sell me hard on that Atea list, but I'm suspicious of it. I couldn't figure it out, but like I, we played one game of it and we had a bad matchup. Like we were, the deck is to some extent, there's a difference between fight club decks and like whatever normal decks because the tournament meta is slightly different. Uh, but the big thing is that deck was like mostly all sentries. And we were playing into like three simul chip revolver boomerang deck. Like our surveyors aren't going to do anything. I think that was obvious. Uh, this hand, I don't like an SDS early. That's better. Winchester on HQ is pretty good into Steve. Against everyone's pretty good. We eventually will stand off with Arella and Tukana. So that's our remote server. It's going to be probably Hordem. I think I like Hordem on the remote server sooner than Trebuchet. So we're going to go HQ. I wish we had an econ card here. So we're going to do R&D because there's a lot of agendas in there. We'll do credit. Oh, wait, 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 sorry. I did that wrong, but I've just seen your ghost dunk come down. Yeah, we were meant to put the trebuchet on R&D and the Hordem on the remote server because it ends the run. Can I swap some ice? This is recorded, so I don't feel bad. We, we genuinely messed up. Thanks. Okay, so big thing to keep in mind. Ghost Dung is a hard sell out of faction. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, we want to see how many times that this makes more money than you possibly could if you were playing a uh, prepaid voice pad. Okay, well, well, it's gone now. <laughs> so far, we played one event. Let me get the tracker. So far, okay, so far, this is the thing that's worth knowing, keeping in mind, because Ghost Dung is a lot of influence, core damage matters, but currently we're one credit above prepaid voice pad. There's a lot of matchups where it's equal. I'm going to leave R&D open. I'm not scared of one card. I wonder how far this was on the silly level. <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of money. I think we'll just do Arella to Kana and then hold. If we res this, we get onto three. So we're one credit short of resing both. Are you happy to know I'm cooking some pee with Jinsei then? Wait, hold on. Jinsei, if you're trying to sell me, well, I took, I think, all of Jinteki's sake because I think of Jinsei, not again. Ailu. 
right? Four, so, okay, still prepaid voice pad. Now, they're probably not going to trash the ghost tongue. So we can go ahead and res these for three and still score at the standoff. It might be more reasonable to play the too big to fail now, right? I think it is. I think we just draw too big to fail. I don't think we do anything here. Draw, draw, too big to fail. And then next turn we'll do it. Because if we did that, we actually don't have that much money. And we didn't have a good, real great Arella install. Did you add the extra credit for the install cost difference? There's no extra install cost difference. Did I add a credit? Click plus one? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Kror. Stand off here before Hermes? Maybe. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. We lost an Atlas because of it. Docklands? Oh, I'm scared now. Okay. Server one. Res, res, score. We'll do the standoff first to get information, I guess. In theory, you can get like a Tukana, a, a relic card and trash it. Okay, so we drew a card game five. Now we'll do Tukana. So we install something for three. So we think there's going to be HQ pressure. We have to play around Boomerang. Oh, the install cost of the Ghost Tongue. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about the money you save from it. The core damage is a relevant cost, I think. So I think we're just put Valen Chow in HQ. And then we'll just put Border Control on R&D. In theory, border control on HQ makes sense because this might be some Chastushka deck or something. Like, clearly, there's going to be event spam. So, border control into Winchester is good enough. So, we'll do Valen Chow on RD and then this on server one with an advantage. Goes for HQ. We are sloppy. I'm just going to fix this manually. Uh, one, two, one, two. HQ. Advance? Okay, so then we do that. I think that's correct. Okay. We're fine. Normally I would do that. Steve Dawkins could warn Val HQ. Yeah, they're going to be running HQ a lot, you're right. So the Valenchow is better there. I think Border Control Winchester on its own is like just really, really good. We've seen no breakers so far. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that we make it more about the remote server. Estebrado, okay. So Estebrado, we're not on threat. So the boarding control is going to get bypassed. And then we're going to hit the Winchester. And the Winchester has to be traced through. That's not actually stellar for us. Especially because there's two bad pub here. Fire all, yeah, okay. Oh, what, which one's trash or program? Okay. This is actually not a good Winchester. But they don't install programs. Wait a second. Choose a program to trash. It's very kind. Uh, this is trash a piece of hardware. At least they're going to pay some because they have to pay at least, what is it, six to get in here. All right. Uh, they're going to pull back two sure gambles. This is actually going to be a good ghost tongue turn. Uh, if they hit the red cap, we're in a bad spot. It's that easy. We're getting pulled apart. Do we border control here? No, because I think Winchester with bad pub and no programs is pretty bad. You just got to hope. Steve will be gamble, gamble. You can have gamble. Spin doc, nice. Red cap. Oh, okay. Was that the worst options? Yeah. So an extra credit on Ghost Tongue. So it's be prepaid by two. Okay. All right. I'm scared. Uh, they're probably playing a lot of inside jobs. They might actually not have breakers. So what is he up to? Draw scary. Yeah. I think we just hold here. I think we draw once more too big to fail. Yeah, Hostiles are play next turn. No Hermes so far, but Hermes is not that good on this board anymore. I don't know how to play around this because I don't know what's happening. Maui. <laughs> oh man, we can lose on this run. Continuing to counter. I have to crack the border control here. I don't think there's an option. Yeah, we're going to border control this for sure. This is game winning. Fire all. Okay, fantastic. But also spend onto the trace. Yeah, I think we will. Choose a program to trash. So choose hardware to trash. We want to choose the Maui. I don't think we can spend a lot of the trace. Tron is laughing. Yeah, it's, it's going. It's definitely going. Um, it paid five for this somehow. I don't think we can afford to boost into this. About to be rich with the hostel. Yeah, we just need to end the run here. 
I don't want Maui to happen. This is so silly. So this is trace seven. That's a big trace, right? Like obviously three bad publicity and then I'll do trace three again. Probably could have done a bit aggressive into that. But now if border control fires, Tron is gutted. We'll see. Come on. Pay up. Paid six. Okay, well, that's at least a good boarding control. Feels good. This runner deck is so funny. Yeah, we're playing around Maui. I am playing around Maui now. Uh, spell it right. So we get a... So Maui scales on uh, ice on HQ, so... <laughs> so double Winchester is like, you think that's good enough? I honestly don't think it is. I think we want to get a bad pub so we can do the red cap. Score. Okay. So options. Hostile. We're on four bad publicity. So I don't think we want bad pub. Wonder if there's a sneak during the deck if Maui's in there. I think there will be. Uh, not much we can do about it. Uh, then we'll do two Kana. I don't want to install an agenda. So two Kana, we'll get an ice. What ice do we want on HQ? All this ice gets bypassed the same. We're now on threat four land. So like you're just going to debrado HQ. What does it matter? So I think border control is actually pretty relevant. Two kind of border control. Yeah, I liked it. HQ. And then we can install card and archives. I think the Valanchel and archives is reasonable, but it keeps the padding in our hand. I just don't want to lose the sneak door. The fifth bad publicity seems problematic. Do we just not? Oh, we don't have to res this. Okay, no, that's fine. So we score red cap next turn. We're only on one agenda point. I feel like we might have done a bit more work than that, but apparently not. Tron is a bit gutted, but every run, and mind you, you have more money. We haven't seen boomerangs. Paladin, cool. Uh, I think we wait for the Malapert. I think we do Winchester draw Winchester Malapert. Like, I know you don't want the Winchester here. We could do the Archer. I think resing the Winchester so the Hordem connects seems a bit better. But this hopefully draws out a boomerang or something. And then, like, we just want the Malapert so we can go get an Audacity or Seamless or something. Uh, We only have two more, one more red cap after this, so we can't actually win off Fast Advance. We can get one. Oh, no, we can. We just have to draw the last red cap, which is hard. Tron seems pretty gutted here. I'd be surprised to see programs. We've seen one Debrado, one Inside Job, one Forged. We're saving Chesva. Okay, there are programs. You have to worry about Winchester now, though, as much as you can trace. The second Maui. <laughs> okay. Maybe installing ice is bad. Because we have all these ways to install things. Okay. I mean, if there's no programs, why do you want... What do you do with Maui? Spend on traces? That's a good point. It looked good into the Winchester, but yeah, I guess I didn't question that. We'll do Malapert. I guess we should do this in the other order uh, for either an ice here. I think we're going to ice up r and I'm not worried about HQ anymore because we're controlling it. This remote server is going to matter at some point. So here we'll go get... The audacity, because that's fun. Uh, to Kana, we'll get an ice for R&D. I think we'll just get a wraparound. Something cheap. Credit perfect. And then we'll put the spin doctor in the remote server. Just to see if uh, he panics. Two Chesvas pays for the Winchester trace. Two Chesvas and like five bad publicity. Yo, Alec, how's it going? Rashida? Oh, grabbing Rashida there is actually sick. Spin doctor is not that different. But you're right. What we need here is velocity of card draw to close the game out. How are we? We're good. We're playing Wayland. It's fun. Forged? We'll res anything. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Choose res ice or trash. I don't know. What is server one? That's server one. Okay. Position one. Sorry. I know what server one is. Exhausted. So much to organize. Oh, with the upcoming NPC stuff or? He's bottomed out on credits. Res. Okay. Well, that's that. So I think we do draw that and all the stuff i'm doing hopefully it's going okay eh? so we'll shuffle spin that maybe a boarding troll is correct rashida definitely goes in there and i think we'll just hedge fund because we don't have the most money sell the archer somewhere why so we're gonna be forced to res it and we have to trash it they're gonna inside job it boomerang we're going hq here yeah that's fine we've been controlling hq this is totally okay 
He's going to trace through the Winchester. I don't think you have the money to do that. We have six credits of trace. Wait, he has 10 credits for this run? This is ridiculous. He has two, four, six, and a four bad publicity. Uh, no, not of course, not at all. Would Ellis work scoring stand up on Archer sidelined? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. We'll put it on HQ. I just assumed now that it's too late to put down, we'll inside job it or whatever. Just drawing, okay. So now we have to ice up HQ because we're not going to control this draw really well. Maybe it goes on the remote server. I think it goes on the remote server. We can still lose. If the, he steals the SDS, we lose. I wonder if putting the Spin Doctor out there was better because we can't really audacity here. What the heck do we do? So he's committed the boomerang though. We can't take Maui money. <laughs> just trying to re just reading, just clicking on that one to read it, huh? Full spin and jam spin. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait. Audacity to pull spin with Malapert and jam spin? Is that the sickest play? That seems like perverse. So you want to throw out nine cards to score an Alice. I don't know if it's good, but it shuffles the SDS back. I feel like if we put an Archer here. Like, okay, I'm going to do it because it's a ridiculous play, but it is a ridiculous play. Yeah, Lockman Us is the Decklist of the Week. London's in chat too. And the, he's encouraging me to do this, which like, okay, <laughs> and for a penny. There goes a couple cards. So here we can get, it didn't even offer us a relic because we had no cards. That's really funny. Excuse me. I, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> So here we get a spin doctor. Then we can arella into server one. So we still have to be worried about HQ pressure, but only if you can pressure this, which seems difficult. And then I think we want to ice R and D. I had a lot of fun trying this deck. The tempo's unreal. Yeah, the the tempo combos are kind of absurd. So I think here we just get another border control in R and D. HQ is clearly the weak. I just don't see how he's going to threaten us to force us with Spin Doctor. Because admittedly, if we res a Spin Doctor and then he runs HQ, it's bad for us. But now here we can top deck the one regulatory capture, the hostiles. It's just a bit worrisome because anything we top deck is like for the picking. Oh, he has a decoder. Res Valen Chow. I don't think we have a reason to res. Oh, ooh, this is not good. So if we res Valen Chow, we give him another bad publicity. He breaks Valen Chow. He has to boost, boost, boost. So one, two, three. So he goes one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Has to break three. It's actually worth resing. Is that weird? I think it's worth resing. Bad res. For, it feels like a bad res, but he actually does spend a fair bit out of pocket here. Well, not out of pocket, out of bad publicity. Wait, wait, wait never mind. That's not. Oh. We uh, did not get punished. Never punished. Sorry, 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 <laughs> doctoring. Uh, what else do we want to put back? So the SDS is good. I think it's the audacity, right? Yeah. All you. Yeah, I forgot that spat publicity is not his real money. Okay, so now if he runs HQ, he can see all of them. Uh, that's a bit frightening. If we top deck an agenda, it goes in the remote server, but this remote server actually stinks. So tentatively, we'll draw once. I'll draw again. Okay, well, we could lose. <laughs> I think we just credit. Like, we can't hedge fund. Do we put a hostel in the remote server? Yeah, this is exactly why I don't like Audacity, because we're at the whim of the top deck, and it can get really bad. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this one. I feel like things are going to get worse fast. Put the Allison. I think he's going to run it for sure. Like the Winchester does very little with four bad publicity. It's only if this is a barrier. Install hostile. I think that was a better line than maybe clicking for credits. Install hostile. Because then we can do install seamless hostile. Install Atlas. Advance, advance. Yeah, that was actually really good. Because you seamless advance events, you win. 
Yeah, I like to hustle in the remote. Yeah, I think that's right. We shouldn't have drawn. We should just jam. But I'm pretty sure he runs it. Like if we do draw, draw, last click install. Here we have to just be confident. But yeah, I totally forget that with Arella, you can actually score three points with a seamless. I can outtrace him on this, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah, wait, I can outtrace him. This one is trash a program. This one does matter, but so do they all. He has four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten credits. We start with an extra ten credits. So what is the math here? I don't care too much about the shibboleth. Use the Chesva and Maui before you use your pocket money. Use the Maui first, I think. Choose a program to trash. Wait, you just lost two credits. I guess it's still cheaper. ETR is most important. Yeah. Trashing the shibboleth is cool. I think that's probably more important. So this is trash a piece of hardware. This also matters as well. Yeah, the hostile the remote play is really cool. Pay six. Okay. Choose a piece of hardware to trash. So I think it's a Docklands Pass here. If it's the Maui, he loses two credits. I think we do the Maui and then we try and win the trace. So he can do four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have to beat eight. So this is nine. And he can't make this run again. I can't believe I trashed a Maui. <laughs> I had choices and I chose Maui. Now with the Dawkins pass, like we have to respect Estebrado. We'll see how that goes. But at least we can score the hostile next turn and rebound financially. Uh, that means uh, the boarding control is also lost, which is kind of cool. The neat mutual favorite Dawkins pass. Have we been counting Ghost Tongue? Yeah, it's two. It's been three influence and a core damage to get two more credits in prepaid. Which is like, it's worth keeping in mind. It's not a dunk, but like I found that in all my testing, any cool deck they put Ghost Tongue in out of faction, it's been worse than prepaid by a mile. Okay, more bad publicity. Oh my God, triggers. We'll do hostile first. Where did the archer go? Oh, he threw it out. I like credit hedge Atlas in their mode, honestly. But we can do that and more. Admittedly, we're giving bad publicity. No, this is good because we can get a third ice and then put the Atlas, right? Because of Varela. Malap or we can just hold with Audacity. That also like makes a lot of sense, unfortunately. I just wish we had a card to install here. So then we'll do... Like, I don't think we have to make that play anymore. Uh, two Kana. We'll just get something on HQ. Unfortunately, it's all bad publicity garbage. Trebuchet. HQ. Choose a card to install. It's going to be a no. Thank you, though. I think I spent literally zero amount. <laughs> you clicked it once, though, on accident. Uh, it did change how I played. But, yeah. I would have credit install hedge, dump the hostel on server one. I think this is, like, such a good play, though, because I don't know how he's going to run this. The only thing we're weak to here is Sneak Door, and I'm not sure how he, in he installs it. Balance out, we trash ship, and it's cheaper. Yes, you're right. We could always, uh, admittedly with six bad publicity, like at some point he can just play one econ card and he can beat most of Balan Chow. But the trebuchet like threatens Boomerang. It just getting any body here is reasonable. You're right that maybe the Balan Chow is slightly better. Yeah, you see now he can't let the trebuchet fire. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's boarding control last click anyways. Pay five credits so you wouldn't trash the Docklands? <laughs> yeah, fall guy. Yeah, I'm just going to do this so we don't have to do the traces. Okay. Server one. Advance. It's the same audacity twice. <laughs> yeah, good game. <laughs> okay, that, was, that was wild. I thought for a moment there you were breakerless. That was goofy. That was definitely on the goofy spectrum. Uh, the Winchester is really funny into chess when bad publicity. Like, you can't beat it. It's hard to deal with Winchester. We learned how to ask the eight cards, maybe not good, but it was a fun time. Yeah, I'm glad that we did it, but like it's it is a lot of a tempo loss, especially when you're like dealing with Docklands, where like if you draw poorly three, it's not great. Oh, super sick.
Yeah, Tremolo, right? Because we saw a lot of cybernetics. Ghost Tongue kind of gets you there. But yeah, Ghost Tongue, unfortunately, is like almost never worth it. Uh, just because prepaid for, for now is relatively cheap, and there's very few turns in which the three influence and core damage outweighs the extra one credit you gain per turn. That's just a Ghost Tongue issue. Um, still cool card. In Anarch, more defensible because you don't spend six influence on two copies. Thanks for the game. Ghost Tongue type line has text. Yeah, it's cybernetic. Like a lot of the hardware was from that set. All right. Cool. Let's do some news. I have a sore throat. I don't think I mentioned this, but there's a big chance that this stream is going to be incredibly regretful tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm almost done my tea. On that note. There will be more tea shortly. Okay, let's do some news. So starting here, this is a big one. Uh, I think Man of the Moon played a Ghost on Glad in December CO and it was pretty good. I seen the deck list. I'd be surprised. I didn't see it in action, but like I'm still pretty sure even in a shaper deck, like either playing Onicom and prepaid probably outweighs it. But I think he was playing like what's it called? The uh the shaper reinstall one. Uh you know the one. You know the one. The shaper one, Pantograph, right? I think Man of the Moon really likes Pantograph. Prepare for rebellion without rehearsal. So a bunch of really important things in this article. This was dropped today. We are happy to announce that the second part of Liberation Cycle Rebellion with Rehearsal will be released on March 18th, 2024. So we have a date. That's fantastic. That's like in two and a half weeks or something. It's pretty wild. It's pretty, pretty soon. Um, that means for all the tournaments, you are going to be able to tell whether they're legal or not. So just checking really quickly, generally a set needs to be legal for, I think it's two weeks. So when they announced, where is the announcement of March Accelerated? So the next AMT, when is it? It's March 24th. I don't think it's legal by then. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it's legal by then. I'm pretty sure for the NPC event in Vancouver coming up in March, it will be legal, if I'm not mistaken. But that's soon. That's really soon, which means spoilers will be starting soon. But of course, it is. We'll get there. Pre-orders for Rebellion Without Rehearsal are now live for the region served by our online store, currently USA, Canada, and Australia. We'll come back to that. EU customers will soon be able to order directly through our newly reopening EU online store. There's another article about that. Apologies, I'm not too plugged into the EU scene for obvious reasons, but their online store has been rebooted. It's just it doesn't have pre-orders for Rebellion Without Rehearsal, but the EU online store does exist right now, which is good. So you can pick up all the other stuff as much as that will be up there soon, I imagine. Okay. You'll be ordered direct from us through our newly opened from March 18th, but we'll not be offering pre-orders for that region. The store's not open yet. Anyone outside those regions will be able to order Rebellion at Rehearsal from March 18th through our print-on-demand partners. So the way that you either still do or used to with like make playing cards or drive through or our authorized resellers, we'll get back to that, or download the free print and play PDF on release. So that is sick. The two weeks is only for competitive level. Next AMT is RWR legal. Oh, because it's not competitive. Oh, <laughs> that's exciting. Okay, so it will be. Thank you, Corey. Lucas, Spark of Rebellion, Rebellion Weather Rehearsal March is looking sick. Spark of Rebellion is like the Star Wars Unlimited one, right? I'm so excited for Roar, organizing a startup event at my locals where everyone will be given a random Liberation Corp and Runner has to show up with it. Oh, that's super cool. First new release I've been playing for, did not personally expect to drop that soon. How long is spoiler season? Spoiler season is like last spoiler season was really quick. I think classically there was one point in time where it was like nearly a month, but they say at the bottom. So we'll talk about this art in a second, but spoilers begin on March 8th. So that is next Friday. It's a week from now. Uh, generally, NSG does about a week of spoilers and then the math comes out that community does a week of spoilers and then the set is out. March 18th. What day of the week is that? Let me check real quickly. I'm opening the calendar. You can't see it. Uh, that is a Monday. So yeah, it's probably only one week of spoilers. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's really quick. So March 8th is Friday. NSG does sometimes do spoilers on weekends, and that leaves only one week. So from the 11th to 15th, that's usually going to be a mixture of NSG and Community Week. So usually NSG puts out their spoilers in the first three days. The way that they do it, mind you, is they, and mind you, they have done it. We have spoilers. Are you allowed to scoop dates? I haven't locked in scoop dates yet, Jai. I don't know if you have or if you can, but I haven't done anything on a calendar yet. Um... But yeah, so NSG like reaches out to people who have scoops and usually tells them like, hey, these are the cards that will be in already talked about. So I've actually seen a couple cards from the upcoming set before y'all have, um, for better or for worse. Sorry about that. Um, but they let us see some cards that are going to be available relatively soon so that if I'm doing my video that I record now, as opposed to record, you know, after they do their stuff, I can reference cards that have already been announced, not through community, through NSG. 
But that means there's actually a really small window. It's basically one week of spoilers. And generally the first two to three days is NSG. The rest of it is community. And then it's out on Monday. So it's pretty quick. I missed my window. Ah, oh, bummer, Jai. Next season. Don't worry. Sorry about that. Hey, Shay. How's it going? I was like, I'm just a dinky little Twitch channel. Surely there's no point. Oh, Jai, you definitely should. Just about anybody should. I think NSG is happy to do it. The only problem at this point is like you run out of cards. <laughs> like there's only so many cards in the set. Uh, that's the, the biggest issue. Cool. So that's really soon. So we'll have spoiler stuff on the channel generally between March 8th and March 18th. So it's not a big window. I haven't started working on it just yet. I've been putting together pieces and we'll get to that. This is the first art, not the first art. I think this is the second, maybe third art we've seen from the set. Uh, I'm assuming that this is probably a runner card. Uh, it doesn't look like any corp is really here. So either a neutral card on the corp side. I don't think the police here are looking like they're the, um, the protagonists. One thing I want to shout out, because this actually struck me in a weird way. I was surprised that this did it. You let me know if I'm wrong here. But you see in the background this like giant bird neon sign and this thing here. That's Lagu, right? Lagu. We all know Lagu. I find this to be really strange. Like, I don't know what this is. So the Lagu is like an animal shelter. Lagu Pranwa means like Lake Pranwa, from my understanding. And so this is the shelter where the new runner uh, and, you know, family and friends. These are a bunch of other runner cards and animals. It's an animal shelter. I understand that there was like some interest here to do some world building. But the fact that like this is such a big and expensive neon sign for something that's meant to look a bit more you know, approachable and probably clandestine considering it seems to be a, some sort of operation hub for uh, for the Anarchs here. I don't know. It feels like this sort of like, it's the one thing you know, so we're going to put it in its art. It actually makes the world feel smaller than bigger. I was surprised by this because you see other little references like, the, you know, the sort of bird from uh, Arasana. I think that's sick. You see this on so much other art. But like this Lago here, I don't know. I would expect anything else sooner than there than Lago, but I feel like it's good. But maybe it's an ad, but an ad like that, like this is a neon. Maybe I'm not understanding technology. That just seems like a very, very expensive thing. Maybe it says Lago Prano Casino. I don't think it does because that's the exact bird that is on here. Like that is the Lago Prano shelter bird. You know what I mean? Like this happens in other things before where it's just like, and it, not NSG art, but like Netrunner art will reference the other Netrunner stuff. And I think it sometimes makes a smaller world than a bigger world. But I don't know. It's a weird point. We shouldn't dwell on it. Uh, but it's something I saw. I'd be like, why is Lagu so big there? Maybe I'm missing something in the story. Also, as a set symbol, it's front and center. E similar, yes. This bird is, I don't know if it's a saucy bird or not, but yeah, it's similar to the, to the Lagu bird for sure, which is cool, but like, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Hey, Claire, question from a semi-beginner that I hope is not completely silly question. There's no silly questions. Why does Krim tend to only run one X of each icebreaker? Aren't they afraid of rig shooting Saga's build the last deck? Yeah. Uh, oh, firstly, thanks, love. I got some more tea. It's a good question. We'll get back to it once I finish talk talking about Rebellion with Rehearsal. I'll put a note. If I don't, Claire will answer it. But it is an interesting discussion. It's not a silly question. It's actually really important to try and understand uh, for a couple of reasons. So if I don't get back to it, please remind me because we're just going to go through the news and then we'll get to it. So we'll get to it. That's for sure. Maybe the animals don't do dead drops. Oh, boy. Lagoprim was a big company that sponsors animal shelters and massive casinos. <laughs> oh, man. Skimming back through the VOD, wanted to clarify that my Azdek is homebrew, just a big slow, big rig. Really? It looked exactly like it looked very similar to the deck that was next to it in the Atea list, which I thought was the list you were playing. That's really cool. Crim tends to run lighter on actual breakers because they have a lot of alternative break solutions like Boomerang and Inside Job. Rig Shooter isn't as big of a presence in the meta now because the best runner's archetypes run a lot of recursion. I would also argue, okay, we'll get back to the discussion. I'd argue that Sokka's list isn't exactly Rig Shooter. Um, it does have ways to destroy ice, but it's not often a surprise it's like the one of trojan horse but it is a weakness of criminals if you can trash programs for criminals you can get them down it's like an old thing it's rooted in like netrunner for the last 10 years where a lot of criminals would run one of each breaker and then like mutual favor and slots but we'll get back to it okay check this out is nana trying to climb she got this tower for her like seventh birthday this weekend and she's figuring out how to use it and she's she's figuring it out pretty good okay this is what i don't understand so if you go to your online store in canada if you go to an online store in Canada and you pre-order, oh, sorry, this is not the uh, Canadian online store. Your shop is currently closed. Okay. If we go to the online store, if I go shop and I go to the Canadian store, where's the Canadian store? Where do I pre-order the product? I think I just click on the product. Okay. If I click on the product, it pre-orders product. This to me is really strange. So this is showing the American page. I want the Canadian page. How do I get to the Canadian page? 
United States. Okay, so if I do this in CAD, mind you, I'm pretty sure you don't pay for shipping here, but I don't understand this. This cost, this is classic of where we've been buying NSG product. This is 62 Canadian dollars to get from NSG directly. It ships very quickly. And I don't believe you pay for shipping, but March 18th. But this showed up here. This is 401 Games, one of the biggest game stores in Canada. It's in Toronto. But they have NSG stuff ready for $49 plus shipping. This is sick. And I heard from the Toronto people the fact that this stuff is on store shelves at a major retailer in Canada. It's actually been bringing people not only to their Discord, but to their game. That you can find this on the shelf. What I find really strange is like how big that discrepancy is on cost. Like, it does not make any more sense for me to order directly from NSG. Does NSG get a bigger cut from order directly from them? Yes, but that is a, that's a big difference. That's not a slightly difference. That's a big difference. So firstly, if you want this as an option, whether NSG is going to say order from us directly because we make a better percentage of that and it's better for the game, so be it. But the fact that this can be found for such a great price on one of the biggest retailers in Canada, that is my, my bullet point here. I think that's fantastic. So uh, for those in Canada, if you want to order from other websites, this one is technically cheaper. I'm not sure what NSG would prefer you to get from, but there's definitely other options here. And that's phenomenal. Again, in Toronto, I've heard that the fact that you can find product on shelf at big stores is bringing a lot of people into the game. So shout outs to the NSG folks who've been working with 41 games to make this what i'm assuming is one of their uh partnered retailers as that goes because that's awesome that's really really important for the health of the game okay uh eor store is reopening we just talked about that i don't know too much about it but you can't pre-order rebellion without rehearsal but they'll be up soon what's next this so we talked about this a bit on tuesday this was announced earlier and monday uh that the 2024 world championship has been announced it's in san francisco it's from october 18th to 21st we talked about it at length on tuesday i have a bit more mixed feelings if you want to hear more about that you can check in on tuesday but the big thing is a lot of the fantastic people from that bay area were really quick to put together a guide uh, i'm going to link that in the description here i'll put it into the chat right now if you want to check it out but if you're interested to travel, to plan your travels, any of that great stuff, either our worlds or just to hang out in San Francisco or in that sort of area, this is fantastic. So shout out to Wenagon, Melanomi, Tax, Sleeping in Bio, and Chenchling. Chenchling directly shared this with me. Not that Wenagon didn't pop into the top and share this as well. Go to SF Worlds. So this is all here. Has some really good stuff talking about like airports, the areas you should and shouldn't go down to, the places where hotels are a bit more cheap. Mind you, the, the Hotel of Worlds, I don't think I was clear enough maybe when I talked about this during the Tuesday stream. And it's really good that this article is up when Rebellion Without Rehearsal is up because more people will be coming to the website. While the fact that World Championship is at this hotel, you are in no way required to stay at the hotel. In fact, don't stay at the hotel. It's incredibly expensive. You can save a lot of money traveling just 20 minutes on the BART, which is like the, the transport. But just to be very clear, while this is this place that is hosting the Worlds, you don't have to stay in a room there. It is just in a in a space in the event, in the building. So yeah, please don't stay at the hotel. Yeah, Jeff has been very clear about that in chats. Like, yeah, and you can stay wherever you want. But yeah, very, very, I hope it's very clear here. This hotel is incredibly expensive. Do not stay at this hotel uh unless you really want to it's probably nice it is very expensive public transport is pretty solid in sf yeah there's a i've i've ridden on the bart before uh which is like the the train line i've used it to get off uh the i guess it's the peninsula right but i'll share this again it'll be in the description if you're watching this live it's on youtube or not live it's in the description but uh this sort of stuff is fantastic it has all this stuff that you'd want it to have and i'm pretty sure if you have any questions please reach out to these folks they have their handles here and you can ask more direct questions it's also only a matter of time before the folks at nsg are going to be setting up the like what's it called world's uh discord channel and the, the world's discord channel which was a thing starting last year was the coolest space ever it was kind of sick hold on that there needed to be a safety section in the dock is wild. SF is fine. Thanks, Wanagon. I agree, said stuck, but I felt we needed to address it. SF got such undeserved reputation. Um, I'm not a local, so don't pipe in on me, but I've I know my partner stayed in a hotel once in the Tenderloin and did not have a great time there. So there's certain areas which you probably should know what you're walking into, but um, I don't there's worse places to go, that's for sure. First time I went to GDC, I stayed on the edge of the Tenderloin. <laughs> Shrug. <laughs> Last two years was NG on Bravado, right? Hold on, in response to what? Really curious about what the SF Cityscape Altar is going to be. Yeah, there's a lot to draw on from San Francisco. That is for sure. Yeah. That's literally just a Tenderloin. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Uh, really curious, excuse me. It's in the name. San San North? What's in the name? 
Okay, another thing to shout out really quickly, talking about San Francisco. So this is, we showed this on stream, I feel like a week ago, a week and a half ago. This is the Beanstalk, which Encoder put together this leaderboard that tracks your scores so you can like have some sort of competitive ranking system between, uh, currently I think this is the season we're on, so you can see your name go up if you're the sort of person who's a competitive grinder and you want to give yourself goals and comparisons and stuff like that. I think a lot of people will really appreciate it. But the big thing that has been changed in feedback since this came out, which is really important to understand because if unless you're plugged into this, you're not going to know, is that Encoder has got some feedback about this. And so currently this is all strictly opt in, which means that if you want to see your information on this leaderboard, it's no longer your information is going to be there whether you want it or not. And then you can choose to opt out, but you actively have to choose to opt in. So if you didn't realize that and you were excited to see your name up on the beans and then you realize you have no beans it's because you have to now opt in from my understanding so all these folks here have chosen to opt in if you want to opt in i'm not sure how it works probably in the faq reach out to encoder read the faq i should have known what the response is to that but just keep that in mind that encoder addressed some feedback that people would rather have it opt in and then opt out so that is an important change if you're excited to see your name here you do have to opt in for that last thing March Accelerator Meta Test, this is coming up really quickly. There's a tournament as soon as this weekend, which is the Sunset Tournament. This one makes more sense for this time zone. The last one was a bit early in the morning. Uh, that is just this Saturday, March 2nd. The next event from that, mind you, Sunset, if you don't know, is its own thing. APAC time zone? It still starts at like 11 a.m., I think, for us. But there is an AMT coming up on March 24th. It looks like RWR will be legal for this. That is coming up on March 24th. Maybe this is actually not a good time zone for me. 9 p.m. No, that's not good. The sunset is good. This one's not good, but that is relatively soon uh, coming up on the 24th. So the new cards will be out by then. Linked NRDB account, user settings, user activate toggle. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Fantastic. That's it. I think that's all the news we have. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on for sure. 9 p.m. isn't too late. It's not too late. It depends how long it goes. I'm pretty sure it's going to go long. For me, that's like the kind of time that I'd watch a stream. Not that I would play because if you make the top cut, you're up to like four in the morning. But hey, if you want to do it, you can do it. I did an interview with the Feb Sunset AMT winner on my channel. Oh, sick. Cool. The Sunset AMT is the last Sunset AMT and the APAC AMT will be the first with RWR, JNet Willing. Yeah, totally. Uh, so far we've seen, we haven't actually dived into the Sunset results. Let's talk about that really quickly. I think we were meant to. I think Sunset is a really difficult thing to get results from because a lot of people are kind of interacting with in a different way. I think we saw a lot of expected where people took existing decks that made sense and then just played them. Uh, there's a lot of like tier one decks that seemed like they need minimal adjustments to the sunset format. And those I think did relatively well. So shout out to dragons one rule who played an op deck that I think is like grindy. Like I think it's grudge work adjacent. It's been a while since I saw the list, but I think it was like that sort of uh, kind of list. And then we see RH. I don't know what this is. We see some op, but I was not surprised to see things like Hoshiko and the Lu decks, which are very similar to the top decks right now with minimal changes. I'm not actually sure what Criminal loses. Shout out to a wild Turdok. It was just Grudge and Mulch, yeah. And I think that's gonna happen. And so what's interesting to me about Sunset, yeah, this seems relatively standard. Uh, what's interesting to me in Sunset is more so the decks that exist as response to other things. So for instance, we saw Tron's deck. Tron played Building a Better World that had a uh, blockchain in it. Not the first thing I would do, but it's cool to play blockchain in a world without Cleaver, because Cleaver, in theory, Boomerang, all this sort of stuff, invalidate that sort of ice relatively well, especially Cleaver. And so that sort of response to a meta is what I'm more excited to see from Sunset. So. I don't know. I, I don't want to dismiss. I think a lot of people probably did grind Sunset. And if they came to these answers as like, this is the best of Sunset, then it might be. But I think it's still probably a young meta where we can't come up with like, like, I don't know what's definitive and what's not. Um, so it's a bit hard to tell. Outfit was the other big one that I think got very few changes. I think Big Deal Outfit lost like no cards whatsoever. Blockchain Game Man was on stream for a bit. That was wild. Oh, super cool. And mind you, you can watch this. This is all streamed. I believe you can still find it maybe still on Twitch Null Signal Netrunner. If not, it'll be up on YouTube. If not, if it's already up on YouTube. But yeah, there's another tournament. I think Sunset's cool. Um, I do. I'm not surprised about all the Lou and, and Hosh, but there's like very little Shaper. And I think all the Shaper did really poorly. Losing SMC is kind of, kind of rough, but I'm pretty sure the other SMC, they were like relying on Into the Depths and stuff. Yeah, as like the SMC replacement. Nanook, this is cool. Uh, other you want to shout out, there's a New York City February CO recently. It was like last weekend. I know a bunch of folks travel into it. I just want to shout out Cato. Well, firstly, not again. Congratulations, of course. D did fantastic. Cato, with this tech tree, 
I can't believe Cato played this at an in-person event. I did not expect anyone to play this in person, but this is the 60 card World Tree deck that I think is very difficult to play. And Cato apparently pulled this together at a tournament and played it in person. There's a lot of shuffling. Well done. I would not be brave enough to do that. I'm glad that it worked out. So shout outs. That's fantastic. Uh, this event looked killer. There's a lot of nice players out there. Shout out to like the top four here, let alone like look at these names. Like this is a hard field to, to play anything in. So well done. Graham. Hey, shout out to Cato. Yeah, that's sick. I was like, like absolutely flabbergasted to see that. On that note, because we're playing some Wayland, I think this is the next deck I wanted to try out. And it's a weird one. Loving the Unloved, as it's called. New York City CO. This is Santa's list. I believe Santa had a thesis to go out and play some of the cards that I haven't seen a lot of play. So we get to play uh, the Wayland ID from Ashes, which I often forget exists. It's a flip ID. Flip IDs can be pretty cool. As a, you only have one remote server, good for streaming. Bit rough to play Spin Doctor. You'll notice there's no Spin Doctors in here. And if you want to run HQ, cost a credit. That's an okay ability. It's okay. But once you flip the identity, which there is no way on JNet to you to see what that is, you have to open the Earth Station page, which is a bit difficult. I have it here. The other side says the additional cost to run the remote server is six credits. And this gets flipped once the runner makes a successful run on HQ. So the one remote server is difficult to run for sure, as long as you get this flipped over. Hold on. I had a question. I, we should answer that before we go deeper, before I forget. Claire? Claire. Claire, are you here? Claire, the question is, why do criminal decks run one of each breakers? It's a weakness. But it's a strength. It's generally both. Okay. So the thesis is, we'll get back to the deck list in a second for sure. The thesis is, why do runners only play one of each breaker? Or sorry, why do criminals run of each breaker? And this actually goes way back in time. You can look at a different list and tell what the deck is even if you blank out all the cards by looking at the construction of the deck, generally when it comes to programs. And I'll show you this. So let's find a good Anarch deck. It's just a good stuff Anarch deck. So mind you, this is an old list, but this is a really old list. It's okay, you don't need to know any of the cards here. But Anarchs back in the day were very common at running multiples of their breakers and then just hoping through sheer force of will, sheer force of draw and discard effects that they would eventually find the appropriate breakers. Anarchs inherently are not meant to be consistent. And in faction, they have next to no way to find the right tools for the job. So you generally find an Anarch list by seeing that they have a brute force, multiples of the same cards and they're just gonna draw into them eventually. Not the best example, but this is how Anarch breaker suites look. Now on the other side, we have Shaper, and Shaper is very, very different. In fact, we can look at this World Tree deck. Shapers are often an extreme in which they have a lot of one of breakers, and then they have a lot of one of programs. This is again an extreme example, which are generally bespoke solutions to bespoke problems. But that's okay because Shaper is largely defined by their ability to tutor their deck, at, usually at instant speed, to get the right program for the right time. So it's not uncommon to see a whole list of programs that Shaper can say, like, in this matchup, I wanna get this, in this matchup, I wanna get that, because inherently that's part of their card pool. Now, Criminal is in the middle because they have a fair bit of draw. They still have some bespoke like problems to bespoke solution ratios, uh, but they also have slightly ways to tutor their decks. So this goes back all the way to, is it called special offer? No, what is the um, express? What was the original mutual favor called with like the, the delightfully androgynous person delivering a box? Special order, thank you. Okay, so original 2012 core set, this is where this sort of pattern kind of came in, is that there used to be this card in Criminal that just said, search your deck for a thing and install it. Uh, Scam Shop, love this deck, special order. So they had specifically this card, and this card used to be a two of, sometimes even a three of back in the day. And this card says, search your stack specifically for an ice breaker. Now, criminals were really good at just like running into stuff very quickly. You're forced to res the ice and then they can go find the program that they need from their deck, specifically the icebreaker. And then because criminals are generally based on pushing themselves forward off getting successful runs off certain servers, that is the way they would work. Now, on top of that, criminals also have a lot of ways of getting through ice through different means that are not programs. Uh, so this list is a bit different for reasons that are a bit more complicated. Oh, this one's also a bit a bit wild, but it's not uncommon. This is not a great example. Let me find a better one, I think. Uh, what's just like a criminal deck? This is Timmy Wong. Yeah, it's going to be straightforward. This is Timmy Wong. <laughs> and this waltz, that has to be a good example. Yeah, this is more what it's like. That is one of of every breaker. Fairy is a three of because it was a disposable breaker. It's a one-shot use, so finding one early so you can get. 
so over time, we slowed down. Yeah, Jeff is saying 1x Breakers is a bit of a later evolution. This is not too dissimilar, but the idea is that these decks were on 3x special order back in the day, and then you ended up in a place where you only ran one of each Breaker. This deck is a bit different because it actually has like one decoder and another decoder, and you would pull the right decoder for the matchup. So you notice we're on a midpoint between Shaper and Criminal, so that's largely what it comes down to. But we had ways to get the thing. So generally, you would check with your face, special order for the right Breaker, and then use that breaker to push yourself forward and back in the day we had ridiculous ways to push ourselves forward find out what the ice was on hq get the breaker account siphon game was already immediately pretty messed up so that's generally how criminal did criminal also doesn't had a, didn't have a lot of access to mu cards so they didn't have a lot of access to like other tricks sneak door beta could show up but that was kind of it not a lot of flashy stuff, just having the breakers because their entire deck archetype was def de defined by getting access as quick as possible. Now, if you look at something modern, so if you look at like uh, Cable Carnage's uh, Zaya deck, you see the extreme of what this has come to, where you play one of each breakers and that's it. Uh, this is a good deck too. Where's... Oh, not Zaya, sorry. Uh, Sable. It's more like 2016, 2018 if the power level of other cards went up. Yeah, that's true as well. The other cards in the deck got good. So, okay, we'll just open Rotom's deck. So now this is kind of what it comes down to, but a big thing as well with Criminal that was pointed out in chat earlier is that Criminal also, not that they didn't back then, but even more so now, have additional ways to pressure ice that are not entirely dependent on finding the right breaker. So this deck only has one of each breaker, and that's okay because early game you're pressuring the corporation by just checking with your face, slowing them down and forcing to res their ice, and then you still have other additional ways to break through ice. So you have these boomerangs that break ice and then go back into your deck. So even in the early game, if you don't have the right breaker, and very specifically for this, deck the breakers are actually not that good in the early game so you kind of want to avoid putting your breakers down too early this thing makes a lot of sense another really big change is once amakua came out for a long time is that this is an ai icebreaker so a lot of times getting this down so you'll see a bunch of decks are running two or three amakua and then one of other breakers this was your early thing and then eventually you get your breakers down now you mentioned why aren't some decks running 2x breakers because they're really weak to program destruction and your answer is yeah they are and I think that's a genuine way that we're seeing at things like Fight Club, which is like an ongoing tournament series, is that there are ways that you can threaten criminals. If you trash this criminal deck's Kurapira, they're not going to lose the game on the spot because of the aforementioned the fact that they still have AI breakers, they still have boomerangs, they still have inside jobs, they still have economic pressure just so you can't res all your stuff. There's other ways they can deal with it, but generally it is a weakness of, of the faction. Sometimes for newer players, I do recommend that one of the com most comfortable things you can do is actually run two of each breaker and just have a bit less like super, super min max, cons not you get more consistency as much as you do eventually have dead draws. And there are certain metas where I don't think I would play a criminal deck without playing two of each breaker, just so that I can be a bit less precious or have, a, you know, a way to not get blown out. I don't know if it's this meta right now. Specifically, I think there's bigger problems they want to deal with, but it's a mixture of a lot of things. The fact that mutual favor, mind you, I didn't mention this. This is the modern special order. It only gets icebreakers. The fact that criminals have a good way to put pressure on. They have other ways to deal with ice, like inside job and boomerang. And at the end of the day, it's okay. Let me catch up on chat. I always felt like crims were stuck playing lower breaker counts because their infaction options sucked. If you wanted to use influence on anything interesting, you ran less breakers. I think that's true for the era where like you were splashing, uh, what's it called? Paperclip money, right? Like there's a, a big point in time where, right? Like you just didn't, your breakers weren't amazing. At least your your decoder sucked. Uh, your barrier breaker wasn't existent. So a lot of times you would go out of your way to you know spend influence on one fractor. So like this is the kind of peak netrunner with the singleton breakers. Is you had one Amakua, you had one Bugalter. It's now banned. It's the best killer. You spent a lot of influence on a paperclip, and then you had a bad cat's cradle. And then your pressure came from other stuff like boomerang, inside job, and apparently forge activation orders. This is like very good representation of one of each breakers. So yeah. Before then, Jai, if I recall correctly, but maybe that was the flip point. And that link doesn't go through Temujin. Yeah, the link got swallowed, Jeff. We don't even see it. Temujin and Andy were basically 1x Icebreaker with 3x Special Order. Yeah, that wasn't uncommon. Like, one of the most common play patterns in Criminal was, like, Smash HQ. If they felt like they had to res, you just Special Order for the Breaker, and then you sent an Account Siphon. It was that simple as it was. You rate Corroder over Cleave, Ray? Wait, modernly? Or Jeff does? If Kurapir the best crim factor ever printed, um, yeah. Kurapir is the best criminal factor ever printed. But like, <laughs> that's a pretty low bar. 
Uh, let's do, what is it? S fractor. I never know what it is. T maybe it's, it's not what I want it to be. Okay. Uh, faction criminal image search. Some of them are really bad. Like I do really like that NSG has been saying like certain factions should be worse at certain things, but they shouldn't be unplayable. Like a lot of paper was wasted. Actually, I think breach might be the best criminal fractor. Let's be honest. Uh, but yeah, there's been some really, really, really bad ones. Like Aurora is very bad. Uh, I don't think Aurora's Mackler is really quite bad. Uh, Tycoon is not awful. It's playable. I think Tremolo it was playable at certain points. It's still fine. Uh, Tremolo is technically playable. Saker is not good. Spike is its own thing. Marjana, we forget it exists. Mockler's ass. Damara is really quite bad, uh, but Breach was actually playable. Um, I have fond memories of playing Breach because it was the best way to like break hives and like curtain walls and stuff like that. There's a weird window. Breach breaks ice wall for two. <laughs> yeah, it's fine though. You break hive for like four, it's fine. I like Damara. I don't think I like Damara. Damara was also weird because like Abignail and because Abignail was the only one that stayed, right? Damara and Lustig did not make system update 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe because it was in the first deck I ever brought to a tournament. That would do it. Yeah, that would help. That's good art. The easygoing startup deck series I'm working on pretty much always runs two of each breakers because the decks are meant for learning. Yes. And I think that is one of the downsides to like the deck that I recommend a lot of new players to, to run, which I have closed apparently, uh, which is that that criminal list. And I think it's just strictly better to take the criminal list and put two of each fractors and or like at least add a second mutual favor, because I do think the sort of like understanding when to pull the fractor or sorry, when to pull the breaker specifically is something that newer players have way less uh, familiarity with. That is very hard. And then a lot of players feel like they can't play the game if they don't have the right breaker. And that is a skill that you develop more that you play a little in the more you play criminal where you can exert pressure without having the right breaker. So like that sort of Ranji Doge. Um, a Zialist, I think should have a second mutual favor if you're a newer player for sure. Career Pira is maybe the fourth best fractor ever. Paperclip, Lady, Corroder, Career Pira. Shit, Jeff. I can't think of a good fractor beyond those four. Are those the only good fractors ever? I wish I could sort by like play. Paperclip also rolls over Rig Shooter. Yeah, that was a good part of that. Claire, thank you. Of course. Don't call your question stupid. We generally don't say that word around here for what it's worth uh just ask questions it's sick as for a subtype f for faction <laughs> macular fully has it going the tycoon damn play ty tycoon actually slaps tycoon was seen play as like a wraparound beater it was fine when i inner sleeve my entire neuron collection i was very tempted to leave marjana unsleep i don't think marjana is like unplayable like i think if we get to a, a spot where like you just need a fractor because of <laughs> immediately we're playing around wraparound like marjana is not the worst it's just like kurapira is relatively the same to deal with most of the low strength stuff and then it's actually very good at breaking the low strength stuff because then you translate to big stuff and it actually controls how corporations play the game i think that's neat i think cards like kurapira which like mathematically obviously breaking certain ice is terrible the fact that this card which yeah it's probably one of the most interesting barrier breakers ever made controls the game and makes you play certain matchups different i think that's worth something i think that's really cool okay best breakers I think Marjan was totally reasonable, but now I can't see a world wherever I looked at it. Yeah, Inti was pretty good. Yeah, I think Inti actually might hit that list, Jeff. I think Inti was actually really important. Okay, so let's talk about breakers. I think Begnaught's fine. I think Begnaught is a good breaker. I wouldn't put it on the top of the lists. We'll see if Banner makes more sense in a couple weeks. I'm assuming we're getting a lot of support for uh, Mercury. A Lady was busted. Cleaver's busted. Uh, Corroder was the breaker for the longest period of time in the game. Like, we just didn't look at other refractors. Uh, Kurupir is good. Sherman is not great. Uh, Lamb is arguably good. Inti, like Inti was played because it was the cheapest thing you could possibly put down. Like you play this in Criminal, you play this in Shaper. It was good. Uh, Morningstar is a joke. Niffer is a joke. Paperclip is absurd. Uh, Penrose, not really. Propellers, fine. Uh, yeah, that's not, I would say, oh, Yusuf is a good card, but Bill Durand. Yusuf is really good in the decks that play Yusuf. Gauss is fine, can be worse. Yes, you can definitely... It could be worse, that's for sure. Inti was cabin tech for wraps, as I recall. Yeah, I, I honestly only played Inti as a way to like generate an early cheap fractor in criminal before uh, any of the other options existed, or as yeah, a wraparound support in Atman and Shaper. The fact that appear means you crack border control before you break. Yeah, it's interesting. Banner feels like Mercury tech printed in the wrong faction. 
It, it's weird how it is. Yeah, I agree. It does feel like, and sometimes they do that, like intentionally, obviously. Uh, a lot of times there are cards that are better outside of faction that are printed in faction because of flavor and because of supposed balance. It's hard to say anything regarding the word balance and, and Mercury right now in the same sentence. Um, I'm honestly, this is my biggest fear for RWR. If Mercury is good and there's a lot of bypass tools, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to be upset if RWR is just bypass tools. Because let me tell you, as much as people are so hyped about Mercury, because like Mercury the character, Mercury the bypass deck, the monkey's paw, my friends, the monkey's paw. Oof. Kirpia special effects is the kind of thing that actually makes a breaker interesting. It's right up there as one of my favorite icebreaker designs. Yep. It's not just the stats on it. It's what it does to the macro game. The significant pause into Andre Zuman. I honestly don't get it. There's like this weird, you know, people, oh, cool, Mercury, I'm going to bypass and see extra cards. It's like, do you don't want a good deck that's based off of bypass? Like if a good deck is based off of bypass, ice gets useless. Why are we having fun? Are we having fun yet? All right, let's play the Air Station deck. Um, loving the Unloved. So a lot of weird cards in here. It's kind of by design that there's weird cards in here. So we get to play uh, one and a half cards we don't see. This is Transport Monopoly. It's an Ashes card. It's 4-2. You get two agenda counters on it, and you use the agenda counters to make a certain run be cleared not successful. On its own, not the worst effect. The bummer is that we saw this effect attached to Crisium Grid, which is a really good card. It used to be a staple card. And that's because back in the day, we had very, very, in fact, game-defining uh, successful run effects. Largely Account Siphon, and then on top of that, like, I don't know, indexing, medium. Still kind of works. But Account Siphon was the biggest reason you played Crisium Grid for one influence. This was one of the more commonly splashed cards for a very uh, wide enough window for uh, Boomer Netrunner players. Uh, so we were very familiar with that card. Crisium Grid, mind you, makes the most sense in Earth Station, because Earth Station flips when you make a successful run on HQ, and that means you have to run HQ twice if there's a Crisium Grid after paying five credits. Let's take that, uh, Wanza. So Transport Monopoly gives you that on a stick. Is that worth a deck slot? I'd argue probably not. It's obviously a good effect, and it shuts down everything. Like, it shuts down Conduit, successful run triggers. Like, there's a lot of successful run triggers, more than you probably recognize. But the test, the hard thing is testing when you want to use them. Like, do you transfer Monopoly a dirty laundry on archives? Probably not. And then you end up in this weird game of chicken trying to figure out when you want to stop it. So who knows? Crazy good versus APOC? Yeah, I was very good against APOC. Give me the tools to make Mercury reprise on Passant interesting. Let me rig shoot the corp. I don't know if you want that to be good. If Mercury is good, I can play Blackmail Val again. <laughs> um, so this is, makes some sense in her station. That's fine. We're also playing three slash and burn, which like this card is very, very cool. I have no doubt we're going to see more expendable stuff and probably an ID that interacts with expendability in the upcoming Wayland set. Uh, and so this is probably only going to get strictly better. Now, what I find it to be very weird is that this deck is not running spin doctor and that is not uncommon or station one of the things that you learn is that because you only have one remote server it's actually kind of difficult to play spin doctor because where are you going to put it you already have stuff in the remote server if you're just putting spin doctor in there it's not a good use and so i've seen more earth station decks run things like specifically sprint uh because sprint is cool it's fine it doesn't take up a remote server it's one influence it helps you sort out and this deck can just have bad draw because you have like this laundry list of things you need to do you need to protect hq then ideally you protect every remote server but once you protect hq then you have to build the remote server then you have to put something in the remote server then you need to crazy one hq like there's a lot of things that go on and if you just draw agendas bad more so than other decks this requires a bit of setup i reckon uh so sprint is good the only thing we have is a single attitude adjustment does that go far enough F tune in right now to find out but that's neat. We're going to be scoring out four, three agendas, two, a two, no, four agendas, a two, a two, a two, and a one. So finding the hostile takeover is actually relatively important. We have two of them. Assets. Rashida. Okay. Uh, a lot of times you see wall to wall in these decks because they want to use their one of remote server when they're not using their one of remote server. This one's on Roughneck Repair Squad. I don't like bad pub removal cards. Um, I don't think bad publicity should be able to be removed from a corporation. I think this kind of encourages you to play a slow, stodgy game uh, that is just grinds the fun, exciting thing about Netrunner down. I don't like it, but it's something we put in a remote server, and on a turn, we get six credits and remove bad publicity. That's a lot of value if we can get it to work. However, this is very slow, and we can't do anything else on the turn. So if you want money, modernly, I'd play Regolith sooner than this, but if we want to remove bad publicity, this is a fine way to do it. 
Speaking of another fine way to do it, increase drop rates. The text on this is super surprising because it doesn't work the way that you think it will. When the runner accesses this, this fires from archives, which is kind of neat, but either the runner takes a tag or removes a bad publicity. You can choose to remove a bad publicity if you don't have bad publicity. I don't know why that is, but you're always allowed to choose that choice. So technically it does nothing unless the corporation has real bad publicity because then it's an actual choice. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I played against this card recently on stream and it is quite annoying. The bad publicity is good, but at some point this will do nothing if the Roughnecks are succeeding the way that we hope they are. Uh, I thought this was the other card. What is the other uh, HB or sorry, the other Wayland upgrade that came out with Earth Station? Because that card's kind of fun too. Played against me. Yeah, it was Utron, right? Transmit Monopoly on a DL is almost as good as Crypto Crash. Um, well, you could argue it's better because you can choose when to use it, right? I do it too. I feel like 10 times a 10, I'd rather slot Regolith, but I'm addicted to clicking more than one credit. Yeah. Tag me runners can choose to take a tag. Yes, and one might see more of those. You can choose to take a tag. You probably won't. Reduce service. Thank you. Yeah, this is a card that like I fundamentally associate with um this deck. I think paying, you know, paying four for this makes the remote server really difficult. Now, this does kind of go onto the back of the like laundry list of things you want to do before you score out an agenda because you have to ice up every single server. Those are the decks that probably play subliminal. I thought this is what normally that card that I read that I just forgot the name of was, but it's not this. Another card that nobody plays that like is easy to forget exists, and I'd argue that's probably not as powerful as it used to be considering Pinhole, but Embolus is also another cool thing if you want to ice up all your servers and make the remote server hard to run. This, mind you, is a champ design, the second champ design card by Dendro. Argenio says when your turn begins, you may pay a credit to put a power counter on this upgrade. When the runner makes a successful run, you remove a power counter and then you can end the run on the remote server if you have embolus counters. Uh, it's probably a good thing that this card isn't good because it's real grindy, but I have no question that at some point in time this card is could or is going to be good. I just think Anoetic is better. So it is what it is. This is expensive. Okay. Kayambi, baby. Yeah, Kayambi is a thing too. So we have Valen Chow. That is our bad publicity ice. So that's the only way we're going to be removing ice. We have three Afshar. I'm not sure I'm excited about three Afshar. I think I'd play something sooner than the third Afshar. Uh, Hordam is really good right now. Obviously, this is good HQ ice. I think Hordam is reasonably as good as Afshar right now. Winchester has been sick with bad publicity is not great. We have like frighteningly little ice. I think 14 ice is too little for this. Uh, Braun is obviously very good. I just don't know how we ice up everything really well. So we're going to try to make the game about the remote server as quick as possible. We also have a singleton extract, which is like kind of funny and too big to fails, which is good. We have bad publicity removal, but this is probably just going to be a three credit econ card. I don't know what we're extracting here. Probably like a drop rates or something. I was thinking about champ cards the other day and realized that Bayoken had one world. So the meta would look scary. <laughs> I don't even know what Ben would have made. Chris Dyer's card. I was thinking Chris Dyer's card was boarding control. Oh, by like not having boarding control. Yeah. That's like the, the drive you need to like win worlds, huh? Uh, let's try this out. This is weird. I don't know how this is going to go. I think there's a lot of things here that we're just trying to play cards that we haven't played before. So like if it doesn't work out, that's fine. We're learning and we're going to be okay by that. There's entire decks that Hordem stops short in their tracks. Yeah, like decks I played last week. Am I right? What is this called? Loving the Unloved? What is unfortunately sad name? Unloved? Okay, wait, hold on. So the idea is that I can copy paste the whole URL or just like the the nonsense name and I can go import deck. Is this what we're all agreeing works? How much longer would a Matee have been tolerated without boarding control? Not that much longer, I don't imagine. And wait for effect. And hold. We are adding our 1,081st step. Okay. I feel like we should have done that a while ago. Would Ob have been printed if Border Control didn't exist? Um, That's the bigger question. You're right. Imagine Op without Border Control. Right? Like if Don doesn't have a Border Control, I'm rioting. It's that simple. Border Control is sick. It's a sick card. I th wish more. That was the thing that we were saying back in the day. And NSG has been doing a good job, arguably too good of a job. But like I wanted more ice to be not just subroutines and strength. We might have got the ob that allowed you to ignore additional costs. 
<laughs> you really think so? Envelopment into Archer or whatever? How bad would that be? You're like playing corporate town. You extract your 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 uh your formicary into corporate town. Would that be fun? Ignoring credit costs is like a pretty fun, succinct sentence. Like I thought that sentence would actually be really ugly. But it's not. That's good. Op and startup is awkward. Yeah. No, I believe it. Like, that's the biggest thing. So, like, imagine that the upcoming set has a two-cost ice that Wayland wants to play. Right? Like, it's really, or even like a low influence thing. Not that we don't have that many options, but like that's always going to be the constantly cool thing with op. And like, I have no doubt if Jeff's not, I'm gonna do this. But but putting out a video be like RWR is coming out. What does this mean for op? Like more than any other ID, any set release matters more for op. Because anything that trashes itself or just anything at a reasonable cost, at a reasonable cost slot, like it's sick. Single click mad? I don't think it works like that. Because it's op, right? It's installables. We'll see. Jeff, do you have spoilers? I assume you have spoilers. He's in there on the ground level picking the best stuff for himself. He's like, give me, give me a mm, num 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 num. Give me a I can't think of the guy's name. Check a scion so I can be upset about it on streamers. <laughs> I was trying to justify op when the runner had to be able to break two, three archers per game. The tools existed, but thankfully smarter people prevailed. I do have spoilers. Okay, sick. I need to start organizing daily casts. Yeah, that's soon, man. It's only one week though. Like it's not as it seems to be only one week, right? Do you want to do a shout out here, Jeff? For those who don't know, so Jeff has been doing this for a while. I believe Ed did this for a while too, earlier, if not later, in which there's a stream every day around like 5 p.m. Eastern where Jeff is online and has folks join him from basically anybody who wants to, as long as, you know, you get a slot. And then you just talk about the spoilers of the day. And it's sick. It's like my favorite thing. It'd be like five o'clock. Let's turn on the television show uh, and hear other people's opinions on it. It's really, really good. If B Bowman Worlds, what are the chances? It would make a two credit Wayland dice. I think it's pretty high. No one wants to play live. Yeah, I know. It just hurts station. Come on, come on down. No ice and liberation so far. They're just strength and subs, right? That's where Masquerade from Vampy from Borealis. Uh, I'd be surprised, Lucille. There must be. Fine, I'll join. <laughs> is there any ice from liberation that is just strength and subs? Uh, okay. Tree line sort of is, but not because it's expendable. But it's the closest to it. Thanks for the shout out. I really want opinions from all sorts of players, not just hardcore grinders. Yeah, exactly. So if you are interested in doing that, firstly, watch the ones from the last season and you'll see how approachable it is. Jeff does a really good job hosting and making everyone like feel comfortable. Even if you say something Jeff doesn't agree with, he's not going to dunk on you. It's about getting other opinions out there. So like, please do it. A teeny is very close. Oh, yeah. A teeny is close with threat. Jeff, can you put my name in the daily cast hat? I'll put up a sign up, Jai. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for joining. Okay. I would have to open up Netrunner DB to figure out what the answer is. So, Balance Show and HQ against Sable is like, okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have what? Eight agenda? I'll play next one if you're still going. It's unlikely unless we get bodied really fast because it's getting late. But we'll see. I appreciate it. Missed out playing Santa at NYC, so now it's the time. I gotta crush every Jack from NYC. <laughs> Not again won the event, mind you. Uh, okay, this hand, we don't have a play. So the thing you can do is you can like install Valanchao, flip Earth Station, install Rashida. If they make a successful run on HQ, they don't pay a credit to do it. Like sometimes having Earth Station flipped is like the best you have for you. Ideally, Valanchao is not the ice we put on HQ. We would either want one of our three Winchesters or one of our three Apshars. So. Uh, that's not great. I don't love this hand. This hand seems fine. Valanchao, Rashida, flip it. Let's do it. I don't know. I don't like the play that much. Because I think you just face check the HQ ice. I think paying six to check the remote server to Rashida is obviously very bad. So maybe that is correct. I was just assuming we would get the ice for HQ that we wanted, which is not this ice. So, you know, funny enough, we're doing the same damn play. I just think Valanchao and HQ is like. Not good. Giving out bad publicity on turn one also in a non outfit deck is not good. R&D mark is whatever. 
Carpe diem. Mmm. Our bird. Nuka. All right. We got a Rashida. Funny enough, if we could flip back, we would actually consider it sometimes. I'm maybe not, actually. I, I thought about it. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so Roughneck in the remote server, really funny. Uh, it's just good, good time. I think we're going to do this on our ND, this on the remote server. And I think we just play a hedge fund. So that ideally, we want to be able to res ice on everything. And then once we get the bad publicity from the Valanchao, if we don't, we do hostile and then we transition to Roughneck. And we just grind out. Like Valanchao without bad publicity is pretty good. Get out of our server. Like it's not easy for criminal to deal with this barring boomerang. But you really want to make that success run, and we just need to make sure we keep our money up. So we're going to do hostile, and then too bad publicity means you can face check Valanchao. Not so bad. So we have to figure out what we want to do here. I think Chrissy on HQ is good, and then we just do Roughneck in the remote server. Right, like this is where it's nasty. So if you want to flip Earth Station, you have to deal with this twice. The problem now with Roughneck, like, uh, what we probably messed up a fair bit is that with the Roughneck and the remote server, like, we can't score the hostile. Like, this is the part where Earth Station gets you. You think I'll score the Earth Station in server three. There's no server three. What are you doing? Oh, it was the Chrysium. I thought they were going to go for this remote server. Right? Like, we've now committed to Roughneck, and now we really have to commit to the Roughneck. But clearing the bad publicity and gaining six is like totally fine, especially if we don't have to discard a card. Oops. And now face checking R&D is a bit rough. Archives mark, great. We definitely need to get nice there. I don't know what we want to get there and feel happy about it. The third Valanchao. But yeah, we just can't hostile. So ideally we do in, like we do we weave the roughnecks in and out. Mutual favor for unity. I don't know if we're worried about that. I am worried about playing this card. I think we put Mavarius on HQ. I think we do well, we can't too big to fail anymore. I think we do border control HQ, Mavarius HQ. Credit? No, we probably draw then. No, because we want to roughneck the following turn, I think. You might be thinking, why'd you put this here? It's because it looks like a Chrysium. And admittedly, a lot of times paying six to run server two is actually correct. Because this deck doesn't have defensive upgrades. Like if you pay six again in the remote server, the only thing that catches you is border control. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's obviously... Oh, oh okay, okay. Uh, uh Help? We've slowed down too much. Maw Sneak Thor, okay. It gets 2MU, uses 2MU. Uh, we lost the Audacity. That could have gone so much worse for us. Uh, that's, uh, that is an Earth Station Flipper if I've ever seen one. To beat Sneak Thor, you need Crazy Mon Archives, right? Oh, no. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, that's fine. We didn't want to do anything with that. Gah. This is where Earth Station doesn't make plays, right? Like, it's not an ID that makes good plays. So, like, if we flip, install hostile, score hostile, it's not great. Yeah, now we need help. Like, now we have a transport monopoly. Like, I think here we draw for ice. The problem is we have four ice. Uh, the deck has only 10 more ice than 34. So the chance of finding ice for the ar archives is not that high. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to lose the game. Holy crap, this is bad. They respect trebuchet or something? I don't know. Trebuchet would be good. I just don't see a world in which they don't sneak door, sneak door bounty info, sneak door. This is fine. Yeah, this is not good. Fire all? Okay, I can't install anything with that. This works, right? Or does it not work? I guess it works. But do these not replace each other? Okay, sick. Uh, mod the one card we didn't want. I'm surprised not against checking for singles. Like, this deck is not on Spin Doctor. You don't really have to do that. 
Oh, because you get info banning and click back. Never mind. It's sick, it's sick, it's sick, it's sick, it's sick. Now the problem here with the brawn is we can't push in their mode server. It's interesting Sneaker gives you the success on the server, but Beatrice and Eru don't. Uh Beatrice should. Beatrice just breaches RD. I think it's a successful run on HQ. I'm not sure. Slash and burn indeed. Yeah, this is. Yeah, yeah, sneak door. I know info bounty gets eaten by a lot of different things. Um. Uh, you know when you play a deck with only one archives recursion card and it's an attitude adjustment, you know. Oh. Yeah, it's it's like people play spin doctor. It's pretty good. Don't at me. Uh yeah. Things are going great. It's gone it's gone good out here. Just got just got our four eyes <laughs> in good formation. So the play that made more sense is like throw out a too big to fail. So this drops us to the subroutine fire. This is this is a disaster. All right, losing the bad publicity doesn't matter. Interrupt timing and change the attack server instead of triggered ability replacement. Okay, sneak door. Hit it too big to fail. Sick. Mill it too big to fail. Could not ask for that better. And not again knows that there is two points in archives unless he missed it, which is the best thing we could do for ourselves. He is drawing. He has seven cards. He might not run archives. This too big to fail is very good because what it did is it dived on top of archives, hiding. The face up slash and burn. That's really important. Okay. Hit the second too big to fail. Okay. Yeah. You got me there. You're on game point. I think he might've forgotten that there's a slash and burn in there. Okay. Now Christian beating sneak door is not good because it will funnel him into the slash and burn that we have burned to archives. The only winning play here is to draw the sickest possible sentry or to draw an attitude adjustment. Border control will do. It's way worse than Afshar. I don't like 3x Afshar because I don't think you put that many Afshars on HQ. Afshar got a lot worse when people stopped playing Black Orchestra. I'd rather have a Hordem. Hordem is broken for a lot of money with Unity. It's broken for free with bad publicity. And then the face check's really bad if you have bad publicity. I guess the assumption here is you don't have bad publicity. Okay, so what we can do is see if he will bite because we can Earth Station flip Crazy Mage Q, jam into server two. But this is again the problem with Earth Station is that Earth Station inherently gives your opponent options. So here, not again can pay six and triple click through a brawn, which would admittedly be the right play. I think this deck has multiple seamlesses, so like we can in theory never advance. It's just with this hand is not gonna happen. Where's JNet? Let's put these together. I did that very bad. Hold on. Okay. Um, I don't know what to do here. That would be like seemingly reasonable. Like flipping seems bad. Cruising on HQ seems okay. Hey, Booty, do you have a stream schedule? Hope it's been going so well. It's been going well. I do have a stream schedule. It's actually listed uh, in the YouTube comments and on Twitch in short. Thursday evenings, 845 Eastern. Tuesday afternoons, 1215 Eastern. But it is listed below. Uh, in the it should be in the description on YouTube. Uh yeah. If we do install, install, and double install ice, we'll go down to twelve eleven. So we can't too big to fail. I don't know if we want to give out more bad publicity. Crazy Man HQ is generally where it goes. I think we could do Crazy Archives. <laughs> I was hoping you'd forget. Add the maw card. <laughs> Bury it from obvious view. Okay, he's figured it out. Uh, luckily, we're on no spins, so you'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to draw once. Okay, that's what we want to got on the HQ. This is what we were mulliganing around. We wanted these two ice on HQ, not the Valanchia onto boarding control. And before, yeah, attitude adjustment. We've won it. That's the one way we get out of here. So we need to make this server better. 
Valenchow is like getting hard because we actually don't have that much money. Like I, I think the way that we would eclipse is if we just sat back into the roughneck, but click for six, I generally don't think is enough. So generally you would like weave in and out, but then it's hard with the agenda. It's our station is so restricting with a single server. It's like way more than you think it is. Um, we're just gonna have to hope archives holds. I think we do Chrisium grid on archives though. There's no way that this is not the softer channel. And then I think we have to put something on the remote server. The problem is that Afshar is broken for free with bad publicity. You can still click through Blunt Brawn, but not again doesn't know what we put out there. Uh, Valenchow is not going to work for us. Oh, Chrism and Archives. Yeah, I've seen it before. It's okay. Uh, this is not good. I don't know how we get out of this. Like, we still have so much work to do. We have to score three agendas behind a brawn. That's not going to do it with no defensive upgrades. Echelon, okay. Uh, boarding control here is fine. The jig is a bit up. But now you can face check pretty safely, right? Like our window of being scared to face check and not lose stuff. Not that Echelon's not expensive. No, we have two more Afshars in the deck. Oh no. Too big to fail is important, but like I don't know if we can afford to have more stuff. So like Valenchow, boarding control, I think we could go flip and push. I just wish we pushed anything better than this. Um, so I think we're going to put an end the run on H on server two and hope we're getting to the point where bad publicity is like really not good for us. So if we do too big to fail, we can't flip. So I think we messed up the ordering here. So next turn we do too big to fail off world flip and then we slash and burn it. So I'm going to draw a second click. Don't. Okay. That was good. So our ordering was really, really bad and we got punished for it. Maybe Brown should have been HQ. I think it's the most taxing ice we have though, right? Like admittedly the ice in this deck scales on tax ability based off of bad publicity like i think your mode server should be brown border control because this deck is not dealing with border control or brown really well okay we got our seamlesses now the problem we played the one attitude adjustment like we can no longer for the next history of the game slash and burn with any amount of safety like that's it we can't play slash and burn with safety at all because we have no way of recurring that thing so it's kind of a dead card Maybe we should just rush down and not ice R&D. But yeah, now we are cooked. Um, here we have to, I think we just border control. Otherwise they farm crew appear. This thing costs nothing. What board games are you playing recently? I'm playing Arc Nova with Patrick online. Uh, I am playing Unmatched. I got into Unmatched recently again. We got like our old Unmatched sets. So we're pulling it out because it's under 10 by 10 and many are having a great time playing Unmatched. Oh, this is not a sneaker run. We didn't have to res that. Um, yeah, that's been really cool. He's going to trash us for three credits. He got the Maw, missed. Set credit to two. Oh, Info Benny. Oh, right on. Oh, right. Yeah, actually, Resing might have been correct because it turned off Sable and, and all this sort of stuff. So that might have been wrong. Not on TTS, sorry, on Board Game Arena. Uh, Patrick plays for it so he can invite me to play it. I won the first game and I'm very far behind on the second game. Patrick had a really great start. Uh, I don't think we care about this. Yeah, uh, that's mostly been it. I haven't been playing too many board games. I'm playing Spirit Island a bit. I haven't had time to sit down for it. Same with Marvel Champions. I haven't had time to sit down. But it's mostly been unmatched recently. I've been on Spirit Island Terror recently. And they put out Jagged... Yeah, Jagged Earth came out on the app today, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so this seems bad, and it is because it is. Uh, because Not Again can probably play six to run this. Mind you, you can't use bad publicity because you don't get bad publicity until after the run's initiated. But here he probably just does sneak door. The thing is, as soon as he sneak doors here, he can't click through the brawn. So he's going to pay a lot of money. He has 19 credits. So it's going to happen. Played Spirit Island for the first time two weeks ago. It's so good. It is really quite good. It's really quite good. And it gets even better. All right, Hush on the Valenchow. That's actually kind of fun. That's actually really good for us because we don't get bad publicity. Uh, assuming it's a boarding control. But yeah, we're going to lose the game. I haven't picked up the digital app yet. Yeah, yeah. But it was probably the right play. Uh, 
Uh, fire all. Cool. I kind of want to organize an SI game for Netrunner folks on TTS. There's a lot of Netrunner folks that like Spirit Island. I don't think that's going to be a hard thing to organize. Got to remove the bad pub manually? Oh, thank you. The super positive review of Earthburn Rangers from SUSD today does make me want it, even though it's a Kickstarter joint. Um, that was actually should have been the answer to what I'm playing. Uh, we're me and my brother-in-law. We're like 14 days into Earthborn Rangers. It's genuinely sick. It's a hard thing to talk about. Like, if we want to know what Earthborn Rangers is, I know that Matt Lee's just put out a 30 minute video. You can check that out. Not against really going for the singles on Ma. I don't think he, that's what you want to do here. But he's been running constantly for singles on Ma. I don't think that's right. Maybe he's so far ahead it doesn't matter. But like with bad publicity, there's just nothing we can do to stop him. We should concede. Uh, yeah, it's it's wild, and it's like such a weird game to describe because the engines and the problems it produces and the ways that you have to deal with them are so unlike all the other card games that look like that. It's the best scaling board game in terms of player count I've ever played. Yeah, it's playing with an experienced group and all the expansions. They handed me Thunder Speaker, and it was a lot, but I got it figured out. Thunder Speaker is so fun. I think Thunder Speaker was easily my favorite from the the core box. This taxes out something, I guess. I literally ordered Earthborn off the back of SUSD. It's so unique, but I love Arkham. If you don't like Kickstarter, which like, I get it, but at this point you're not ordering an unknown product, which I think is where a lot of the, you know, uh, past cynicism around Kickstarter can exist and rightfully so. They have their second printing on GameFound. I think you can order it, but I also picked up my Earthborn Rangers from a local store. So just keep that in mind that there's ways to pick it up. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something special, I think. Yeah, checking for singles against this deck where we don't have Spin Doctor, I don't, I don't know. He's at least doing it with like Dirty Laundry, so it's not bad. Okay, okay. All right, I gotta concede. Has Earthburn changed much since the beta rules during the Kickstarter? I couldn't tell you because I'm not that plugged in, but I know I played the demo power guy on, uh, GG, on, uh, <laughs> there's no way I'm winning. There's no way I'm doing anything. Uh, yeah, but I played the demo on TTS when it came in, and I really didn't like it. I'm not sure if things fundamentally changed, but playing it in person, I actually quite like the game. I didn't like the the demo, so I don't know if the rules changed. Thanks for the game though. Uh, sneak door is like honestly the worst case scenario, right? I feel like I'm saying. This is always the worst case scenario, no matter what matchup we play. But sneak up, sneak door is like uniquely the one way that you can pressure this. Arguably, without the sneak door too, like you are running HQ for relatively cheap with two bad publicity. So, eh, it is what it is. Do one more really quick. Will you in? Will you there? Six second delay. Paging William. That was exactly my experience as well. Fell completely flat. Yeah, the TTS demo, I bounced off like an absolute stone. Opposite of the Grim Rule being a rule is honestly my favorite thing in cooperative board game. Wait, in Earthborn? Here, uh, William, you want to join? I'll host, okay? So they say Earthborn Rangers, like, if you have a question, do it either the way that you want it. Like, do it the way that makes the most sense. What's a funny implementation of the Grim Rule is Final Girl, which is a solo, um, is this Will? This is Will, right? Is this he? <laughs> this is Will. Um, they have say when you play and you can't figure out how to do the rules. That you should decide on one, two, three things. Either like Grim Rule, do the worst thing. Do the thematic ruling, which is like do the thing that you think makes the most sense if it was a, a slasher film, which is what it's trying to be. Or finally, excellent. Or finally, do the thing that's the funniest. And they just expect you to be consistent based off of what you're playing. To be like, do the funniest outcome, the slasher film outcome, or just the worst possible outcome for you. Which, they don't always overlap, which is kind of fun. I really appreciated that in the rules book. I am the funky monkey monkey. Oh, fantastic. Earthburn says if you're unsure, resolve the way it's most beneficial to you. Oh, that's chill. I definitely haven't been doing that. So here we can do Afshar, too big to fail, transport Monopoly early to turn off of Shiko Flip. It's not successful run, so it doesn't do anything. It's access to card. Uh, this hand's okay. We have an early Afshar, which is fine. Final Girl's fun. You got to read the rules every time you play a different monster. 
Yeah, I think they later on get a bit more complex, but uh, and for what it's worth, the like starting killer is like kind of boring. But uh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. So Hoshika wants to flip. We can't really afford to ice up HQ. This is going to go on R&D for sure. Or sorry, on the remote server for sure. Then next turn, like we have to, there's like, again, a laundry list of things we have to do. We don't want to flip here because the face check now costs three credits into Afshar. So I think we just too big to fail. And then if we top deck a, a bad publicity removal card or they hit the NBN thing here, we're happy. But then next turn, we just do transfer monopoly advance and probably flip earth. I'm not sure if we have to Chrysium. I don't think we do this early because then they have to deal with Afshar and border control. So that's fine. Okay, so they're going to flip. Fermenter click one. You don't have a lot of good reasons to do that. Not that you, there, you are expecting a bit of a virus here, but now if you draw, you can't play sure gamble. So the sequencing on Fermenter is almost never wants to come down first, unless you're like really respecting SDS. We're going to be like not technically critical. We always want to talk about our opponents doing early hippo two is also something I'm not scared about because the chance that that will has a breaker is like kind of low. So you generally want to get your breakers and economy down sooner than you want to get your pressure. Oh, even extract. Cool. So I think we'll try and go for this card, server one advance, and I think we could consider flipping. Yeah, let's flip. A learning outfit made on TBTF hurts every time you play. Yeah, I thought we'd have 10 credits. You're right. I'm like, oh, it's a trying to get an econ card. A seven credit econ card is okay. A bolt of bird. SDS, I guess. Yeah, it could be an SDS. Uh, that's the one reason. But if it's an SDS, I still think you just install the fermenter and probably run back. Because I think the flexibility to draw, to draw into, like, depending on the deck, right, like Liberated, um, Sure Gamble, it's probably a bit better than, like, losing an extra click on the SDS. Hey, Changeling, how you gonna doing? Thanks for sharing the, the document. Wendigon came in, too, and it's like, yo, you gotta check this out. And it looks really good. Shout out to the Ace of Combo deck. Oh, the JTFQ one? I can't figure out the combo. We did it, like, late into the, what's it called? Oh, on that note, now that we know the release date for the new set, this is obviously contingent on JNet being a thing, but we're going to try our hardest to stream a lot that week. Uh, I'll let you know more. My slash our pleasure. Hey, cheers. So now this run on Afshar, the Afshar is not that bad because you lose bad publicity. That is a, a rough part about Afshar and bad publicity. But now you have to break this to be able to run this. So like there's a lot of things you just have to do. But because Funky put them the Hippo, as opposed to keeping money up to threaten Breakers, we're not that scared of their output. The worst thing they can do is get lucky on, on Centrals. It's a living document. We continue to update it with information, we think, as our questions arise. Hell yeah. And you all linked in your, um, what's it called? Uh, your Discord handles. So that's going to be sick. Okay, now we're unflippable for a while, which is really cool. If there's any like important run event, we can cancel it. I've never actually scored one of these, I don't think. We're going to have an economy issue. Arguably, we could have like slow rolled then to put the two Kana on. I think in hindsight, that was 100% correct uh, because our board state kind of wants ice on R&D. I love too big to fail so much thematically. Like you can convince the government media that Corp isn't actually failing, but it's going to cost you. What do you think about the fact that too big to fail is technically trashable? Like it, it is, it can fail, which is, I think, fantastic. Oh, that's scary. Now you have one good run here. I think we definitely will purge out. Like this is really provoking a purge. Uh, he's pretty far away from getting down to Nob Korea, which is good. Oh, that's the best case scenario. <laughs> uh, bad publicity should not, bad publicity removal just shouldn't exist in the game. Yeah, the trash cost is the theme. Yeah, it's really good. Metropolitan Streamathon. Yeah, for the new set, we're going to sit down and stream for a long, long time. We we'll, might try and do like a full time streaming schedule. Mr. Robot did too big to fail thematically after a hacker destroyed their money. I only watched the first season, I think. So one bad publicity has been removed. They paid two for that, which means that he's probably going to go back and trash with Imp. Uh, you kind of have to use your Imp here. Unfortunately, that means you're going to lose your credit to Hoshiko. So Hoshiko is really bad when you go from one to zero. So the best case scenario here is like you discard Liberate. Oh, click for one. Oh, that's the worst case scenario, unfortunately. So, Will, if you're watching this in the post, right, like the click for one credit is really rough into Hoshiko because you obviously lose it. And now here, because you didn't use the imp of the fermenter, we're purging you. And we have an incentive to purge too because you're going to start your turn on zero credits. So I think there you have to commit to running R&D and imping something or at least imping the increased drop rates. Wish I could take the day off when the set drops. Sophie, you can get sick whenever you want. <laughs> Sorry, I don't actually mean that. But uh, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Um it's uh it'll be fun though we'll be around for a bit 
it's all contingent on JNet working though, which like shout out to the JNet devs. I think the last set was like really smooth on JNet almost immediately. Life advice right there. It sounds like a threat, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, credit card. Okay, cool. Yeah. So have all the compa companies you work for go bankrupt like mine? Is that what happened, Lucille? That's a bummer. I'm sorry. Okay, Hoshiko flipping out. Yeah, flipping in and flipping out is really good right now because you, there's not too much money to be had here. All right, hedge fund's good. We don't really have anything to push out. Valenchow and R&D is totally cromulent. Archives is safe too, so it's hard to get a Hoshiko flip. So our turn is going to be hedge fund, Valenchow. We can put the Tukan on the remote server, so if we top deck a, a one, two, we're good to go. But otherwise, we'll just draw. So this maybe draws some attention. Oh, Lagu. Eh, it's not that much worth playing around. I heard that RWR was much easier to code into Jaina TIA. I think that actually makes a fair bit of sense. Losing a simul chip's good because uh, you have to implement things like threat. And I'm assuming like we're just going to see more, you know, on a theme. So like threats already coded in there. So that's good. Second fermenter. Last it dropped at like 1 a.m. That gave me a smooth five hours to play and three hours of sleep before class. <laughs> I, I am. I, I, your priorities are commendable. How's, uh, how's school going, by the way? They can physically force me to be at work, but I have no power to mentally be there. Hey, there you go. Okay, knob is down. That's okay, because archives is like pretty good, because every archives run, we lose the bad publicity. We have off rolled into seamless. I think we can go ahead and advance it a single time for sure. Uh, currently here, though, on one fermenter, they just are not uh, putting off a lot of pressure. Afshar on HQ is super safe into Hippo, which is kind of beautiful. Valenchow on the remote server, this is, you know, pay a lot of money to see it we can even do advanced advance here the problem is we're gonna to have to maybe res boarding show maybe res island show that's nine so i think we're just gonna do advanced credit i can't imagine us extracting anything ever i'm just gonna keep a card in hand next time we can do seamless jam if we have it if not so what are they say updating jayna with new content i thought never was a complete lcg wait what king no there's a new set coming out wait hold on <laughs> i got news for you uh NSG puts is putting out a new set in like two weeks. It's on the 18th. Yeah, Jaina adds the cards almost on release date. Jaina, mind you, is not NSG related. Ferment for, for two is barely better than clicking for credits. Yes, that is 100% true, but sometimes you just have to do it. Like sometimes you just have to do it to get into the game because you've already committed to it. But you're right. It's not efficient, but if you're in that state, you've already paid for it. Now here, he's on Audrey, doesn't have a cookbook yet, but Audrey is the way that we're going to break and not care about money. So that's kind of scary. Valen Chow is good into Audrey. Afshar is okay into Audrey, so we're fine. So your bad pep, they can run archives at the moment? Yes, they can. They can just remove the bad publicity. But eventually, that won't be the case. Ideally, we raise the Valen Chow, let alone we're probably too conna for some BPIs. TA had like VSA and federal fundraising, which were absolute nightmares to manipulate on week one. Have they changed fundamentally since then? Knob Cree Audrey is a bit scary. Hostile Architecture also fired on every trash. Oh, that was true. <laughs> yeah, that was true. Wasn't there a way that you could just like win the game? There was a card. It was at the last side of the set before, but I'm pretty sure there was a card that when you score it, you just won the game. Or was it when you rezzed, uh, what's it called? A super deep borehole. I think if you rezzed a borehole. Neverwinter isn't dead? I'm on the hype train? Well, wait, King, you've been watching? No, that you, that's uh, what she did. I had no, no idea that you didn't know this. Okay, so FFG used to make Netrunner. They lost the license in 2018. NSG was founded that same year, and they're uh, a nonprofit that makes stuff that's compatible with Netrunner. They've been releasing new content that is compatible with Netrunner and running organized play and doing all that great stuff uh, for years now. Their new sets are you can buy physically, either proxy, print and play. They have all the files up, let alone they have a store. So depending on your area, you can buy the stuff. Like I'm buying it from 401 Games, if not from their store. And you have physical cards. Yeah, it's been going on like that for 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 years. It's kind of amazing. Resident Borehole won the game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. Fire All loses one credit. Continue. I will make this an unsuccessful run. We should transform Monopoly here to deny knob and flip. Uh, Nob's already fired on archives, but we'll definitely do it to deny the flip. Yeah, we could have done it on archives, arguably. Yeah, maybe that was fine. 
Federal's curse on release, there was no pop-ups, so you had to click on the set aside cards, class act style. There's no undo option. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Okay. Advance. Uh I don't think we have to seamless here because I don't think we're gonna do that much more with our click. All we want to do is put an ice on archives, and that will do enough for a while. Gain seven's good. We'll do that first, of course. Then we'll get something on archives. The question is what? Afshar is just annoying enough because it's not zero strength. Uh Valen Chow is a bit much. I think it's just Afshari. We can always extract it for six and get nothing because we're not playing op. Yeah, King, if you have any questions, please ask. But check out nullsignal.games because they've been putting out content for years now. Uh, they are longer than FFG uh, as of this year. Um, and it's been very, very good. And then their new set comes out in paper and online in just a couple weeks. We'll have a new some a spoiler video showing off some new cards on this channel in two weeks because NSG is kind enough to reach out. But yeah, no, it's good. It's, it's good. If you thought there's no more Netrunners, it's been Netrunners since 2018. The Ashes came out in what, 2019 maybe? Okay. Lose one. After gaining two. So the way that this deck pushes itself forward is that, mind you, you could Hippo Archives, is that you need to get accesses to charge the Audrey. The other way to accelerate this is you can get a botchless down, you can get a cookbook, you can get a simul chip, and you can flip. Uh, that is the other way to break in here. Now, Afshar on HQ is pretty good. Nice. Throwing out. Oh, moshing. Yeah, cool. That's good money. We're approaching the point where NSG has been in charge longer than FFG. That's credible. Yeah, uh, it was Josh who was pointing that out during Worlds. I was like, wait, really? And it turns out it's... I don't think we're exactly at that date yet, but largely that's correct. Because FFG put out stuff for six years and NSG has been around for six years. Not at all. Yeah, I don't know what exact dates are, but like... Corset came out in 2012 and then they lost the license in 2018. Yeah, there you go. That's good. So it's about correct. Uh, NSG's existed since 2018 and it's now 2024, so about six years. Yeah, it's later this year. I don't think it's right now, but it's by worlds, it probably is true. I'm pretty sure uh, Netrunner came out around Gen Con, uh, unofficially maybe, which is around August in 2012. Okay, so we have the score of two more agendas. There's two hostels and 35. We'd love to have them. Val and Chow will hit a bit like a truck. And then Archives is sufficiently poisoned. There's also one Mavirus somewhere, which is pretty good. Uh, they He's milled one simul chip. Those are really important. And botulists. Those are the hard things for us to play around. But like inherently just dealing with Afshar or Station. And we'll get a Chrysium Grid on there too, just to save our Transport Monopoly credits. I think we'll seamless this. I think we just do this in Server 1. Oh, Lagusic. Time flies. I remember them at Worlds and I was like, huh, that's true. Yeah, right? Hey, Grim. I guess it depends on when you count as the first energy released. Archive Memories? Our first energy release, I would say, is Ashes. I think they released Ashes before they did the um, Magnum Opus reprints. I'm pretty sure. So we could put another ice here. The thing is, like, they, he has to pay six and then beat Border Control and run back. So, like, this server is going to cost a lot. We just don't have much. Downfall was first? Yes. Downfall and then Uprising. Ashes was before the Magnum Opus reprints because there wasn't a huge reason to do the Magnum reprint op Opus reprints. It was like a thing later and people were like, how do I get those cards? So we can either Ice HQ or Server 1. I don't think we have to do anything. We just click for credit. Spending 3 in Chrism feels pretty bad when we could just counter. Yes. I don't think we have that much else to do on this turn. We also could threaten him a virus. But I think you're right. I think the reason is we probably use the Transform Monopoly on Archives to deny a Knob Curie, and then we'll use the Chrysium on HQ. The fact that we have another Transform Monopoly in the remote server obviously makes it a bit stranger. It might have been better instead to click for credit here, and then we can, instead of clicking for credit, advance this so that we could seamless this and jam the next thing we top deck. Uh, I think we've drawn 15 cards, so we probably should see another agenda soon. Imp is down with three counters. I'm not sure how we get in here. So we probably have to install another Audrey or Flicker. But yeah, I think we're going to use a Transfer Monopoly, probably for Archives, because I think that's the next server they attack. Do you only play Standard? I played the Boom deck and it was hilariously toxic. I'm not sure which deck the Boom deck is, but Boom is not in Standard. I almost exclusively play Standard. Uh, I'll check out Startup real soon, because there's going to be a rotation with the new set coming out only in Startup. 
but I haven't played startup in a while. With the new startup ban list that came out like a month ago, I think I'd be more interested in playing startup. I also know Metropol Grid startup is like a search term uh, that comes up pretty quickly on YouTube, which sucks because I've been bad at startup. Uh, I play Eternal when people can convince me to at Worlds and I have a better time than I think I would. As long as I don't have to meet Rowan again. Rowan. <laughs> Rowan was an absolute uh very, very nice guy. I'm glad I met him. Just not like that. Okay, it's all Resochrism good. It can be imped. That's fine. This run won't be considered successful. So there's denies the knob curry. You can still make a successful card. A successful run later, if I'm not mistaken. Boom is a boomer card. Ah, it's not that old. It just rotated like last year, no? Don't make me feel that old. Standards are really good right now. Yeah, standard is really good right now. And it's only going to be like, in some ways I feel, I wouldn't say bad for startup, but like once everything rotates next year, uh, like all the NSG stuff, it's like, I think there's still a good reason to have startup, but like, oh yeah, so advancing this was better because we could jam Rashida. But you know what I mean? It's going to be like a lot. Oh yeah, this is good. It, it, without NSG stuff, like the entry points to getting into standard, not that you can't proxy, is going to be really good. You ran to Infinite Davis at Worlds almost twice. Round one, yeah. Round one, Infinite Davis setting against Rowan. I lose on turn four. Um, And then on the last round, I sat against uh, War Warlock, but he, he sat down at the wrong table. So I got to play against, um, uh, what's his name? Chromatically again. Oh, which I, his team is lovely. Chromatic's a nice guy. Uh, so we want to put something on HQ because that seems to be the soft server. So I think we're just going to go put a, a second aft share there. Yeah, most cost effective. Nani? <laughs> Civic. <laughs> yeah, it was round one. I, like, I went into it. I know I talked on this on like the stream after Worlds, but I sat down and then like I played my first game and got bodied. And then I lost because... The other side was like a more unfair op deck than I was playing. And it was like combo kill. And I died to mad combo in like turn four. And I was like, hey, teammates, I lost both my games. I've made a huge mistake playing Eternal. And then the day only got better from there. But like my first round, I honestly wanted to walk away. And if it was not a team tournament, I would have considered it a bit more. But uh, my teammates were really nice. And I'm not going to let them down. I ended up with a really good, for how bad and untested my Eternal decks were, I ended up, I think, 6-4 on in the day, including splitting against Jackmade, against Felix, and he his team won, so they didn't drop a lot of games. So I didn't do great. I think my my Eternal deck was like not very good, and I would not recommend doing it. But more importantly, um, I think I think most of the players I played actually did play those cards, but there's a huge difference when you play someone who's played with those cards and knows the play patterns versus someone who's learning a lot of cards for the first time. You did better than me on startup. Yay, there's one of my teammates. That's Chenchling. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. I feel like he had some bad beats though. It was fun watching the startup going on. When you play in a tournament, do you play both runner corp, best of three? No, there's never best of three. So generally tournaments, King, are either two uh single-sided Swiss or double-sided Swiss. If you're single-sided Swiss, that's the old school way. That's how classically the history of Netrunner has been played. So you sit down against opponent and you have 65 minutes to play one corp game, one runner game. There's no sideboarding. There's no best of three. Nothing like magic. Uh, I think that's how magic works. More common now is single-sided Swiss, which you get an opponent and you're told which side to play. And then rounds are only 40 minutes. It's hard. It's a long conversation to talk about why single-sided Swiss, I think, is a much better format than double-sided Swiss. But just understand through pairing, you'll play an even amount of corp and runner games. You'll just always play a different player. Usually play a different player. Jap played standard? Yeah, Jap played standard. Uh, he played uh asa good stuff asa he printed that like 127 steps to get the world's deck he's seen it and on runner side shit what was his, what was he playing i don't know if it was hoshiko it might have been ari i think it was shaper maybe lat actually got a top rated deck list on interview for year of 2023 for the whole ngr actually i didn't know that that's amazing did i mess this up sorry did i mess that up What happened? Yeah, it's a good write-up. Crossing World to play against someone from the same country is a classic. Wait, why? 
Did it go to unbend Kayambi for me when they rotate the FFG cards? I doubt it. I don't know. I don't. I think you're more likely to see a card like Kayambe uh, that is different than Kayambe more sooner than you'll unrotate it. There are 2,297 days between the first and last FFG release. That many days after the release of Downfall is the 1st of July. Oh, whoa. Oh, undo click. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I wasn't paying too much attention. I stand firmly on the pro SSS hill, but I understand there are folks out there who prefer DSS still. Yeah, I understand why people prefer double-sided Swiss. It lines up better with like what you think Netrunner is, but I think single-sided Swiss. I don't think I'd run a tournament in double-sided Swiss unless there was very specifically an even amount of players and that player count was like six. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I think there's some reasons for double-sided. It's just vanishingly few. SSS just isn't worth the single overhead of small CO scale. Yes, if it's really small, I agree. That's one of the ways that I play double-sided Swiss. If there's an odd amount of people, though, I would play single-sided Swiss still, so someone's not sitting out for an hour. Um, I'm not transferred monopoling here. I think we can flip. Oh, it denies Knob Curry, but they have an MP. Yeah, I don't care. I really wish that we advanced so we could have jammed a Rashida here because we're going to lose a whole turn because of it. SSS versus DSS is entirely dependent on what metric you're trying to optimize. Power guidance, I think this is like not a value neutral statement, but I think every, in every metric, single sided Swiss is better besides overhead and how many time rounds you can put in, in a thing. Why are they running this? <coughs> they can't even trash this. Why run this? It's small CO SSS. It was great. Yeah, that's my favorite thing about doing like COs is like a lot of times we have people traveling in or like newer players. So it's actually in their best interest to meet more people. So I actually encourage single side Swiss because you play the same amount of games, admittedly in slightly more time, but you actually get to meet five different players usually. Uh, I don't think. Am I missing something? So this is one to trash. He has no money. He's used imp. We ran DSS for a small jank GNK night, but otherwise SSS for life. Yeah, there's like small things, but as soon as there's an odd number player, like imagine coming into an event with seven players, that's three rounds and you spend an hour not playing, which actually happens to nearly half the people there. So I think that's a big reason why I wouldn't do double-sided if it's odd. If it's even, yeah, 100%. It's more fun playing six different people than it would be playing two more games. Yes, that's what I come down to, especially if it's newer players. Oh, strike fund, strike fund. That's cool. Uh, I'm not going to res because they can trash it. Uh, you've already imped. It's uh, only once per turn. Yeah, you're right. Uh, technically, that's a good shout out. Sorry, I don't have to say your name. Uh, if you want to instruct me, I'd appreciate it. But yeah, they could discard a strike fund from hand. But imp is once per turn and they used it to imp the barding control in HQ. Maybe hoping the ice can be trashed with hit. But yeah, but then it's up to us to res it and like... Yeah, you can sometimes make plays and hope your opponent's going to goof it. Like, that's sometimes correct. But, like, here we have no reason to. You can take the click back. It's up to you. Like, if you don't want to take the click back, you don't have to. It's hard to take a click here. You probably draw. As soon as you click for credit, you lose it to Hosh. But, like, you gain no information. It's totally fine. It's possible for DSS to be simply good to SS by sacrificing the overhead advantage and adding a bunch of overhead. Wait, I'm sorry, Shroud, you lost me. Why, <coughs> why didn't we use Transform Monopoly counter declare to run not successful in HQ? It's not worth that much. Like, these counters can be more valuable later. We're going to have to purge out at some point. They're going to imp something any <coughs> anyways. I don't think the flip really matters here. Like, our turn next turn is install Rashida flip, right? Like, I don't know. Maybe it was worth it. On five credits here, actually, maybe it was worth it because I think the play here is actually purge. And then they can pressure both servers. And currently we can't. So maybe you're right that we could have used a transfer monopoly so that this turn we can purge. Because if I jam Rashida, they can charge the border control. That's not good. Um, hmm. Flip slash advance. I think we're so far behind. You're right. That's probably fine. We're on four credits. They have to run this, run border control, run this again. This they run for free. 
No, they run this for free. I don't think we can do that. But they have to run it twice for free. They can't exactly run it twice for free. This is actually kind of tricky. I think it's an option. It forces them to do whatever they want. But if we hold the slash and burn, like, that's the weird thing about this deck too, right? Like, and I don't know how we haven't said this yet. This deck is running no three twos. And it's running three slash and burn. Right? Like, not even above the law. And obviously, the point of the deck is to play, like, cards we don't play. But obviously, like, the strength of slash and burn is not so much that it's a, it's a fast event still. Not so much that it's, like, a, what's it called? <laughs> that it's a seamless launch. Because of double TM? Oh, triple TM. F it. Triple TM. No, we can TM twice. Ah, oh, that was good. Good hit. And I think we just credit here, right? Or just extract. It's just credit plus. Choose a card to trash. No, we could trash the two Kana. No, if they steal it, we get an uh, ice. That's good. TM is once per turn? There's no way. Why is this once per turn? Playing cards you don't normally play season off world office? Yeah, but your deck needs to do something like you know, load bearing off world office. You can't just <laughs> imagine your deck is just transfer monopolies and slashing burns. Like, that's not good. Oh, but the flip. Sorry. Sorry. I uh I did that real bad. We found it, chat. Yeah, we did. We did. We really, we really do not do that right. The click conduit moment, yeah, that's a problem. You don't really click your ID, yeah, uh, kindly. Oh man, so messy. I'm not very focused. Excuse me. Uh, beans, beans. I'll just fix it. Pull this back, lose three, gain a click, flip. That's it. That should be it. I just didn't extract. I totally, I forgot. I forgot we're flipped. Yeah. Being flipped is actually kind of interesting for what it's worth because obviously we want to be flipped because of the remote server problem, but they can't run HQ because of cost of credit. I don't know what the text on the other side is. I think it's an additional cost. Yeah. So if you don't have a credit, you can't run HQ, which is kind of fun. Wolf 2 moment. Well, Wolf 2 goes for accesses. Wolf 2 playing extract. That's a different line. Now, immediately if we res the border control here, we're bankrupt. Uh, yeah, I think so. The install on my discard, I think... You just got the Lago Steel skin. Yeah, you're good to go. Cool. Lago Branma. Do you think all these characters are going to be in the new set? There's going to be purple t-shirt Byroid. There's going to be Scrubs guy holding. Actually, what does that say? Like, is that a, is that a novelty check? Robodog? All the characters. All your favorite characters are here. Robodog. Speaking of unplayed cards, the list is asking for armed asset protection over extract. Yeah, yeah, it has upgrades in our... Yeah, why not? I, I honestly, yeah, I think that would actually be fun. Yes, it does have slash and burns, you're right. It says obrigado. What does obrigado mean? Fire all. Oh, you don't have to, they don't have money. Thank you. It says thank you? Oh, so it is, it does seem like a medical professional saying like, thank you. Ah, fire all. Okay. So what does it say? This run cannot be declared successful. I will banish your run. It's cool that we get to see Transport Monopoly do its thing. But like, obviously, was a Transport Monopoly better than an Alice of the Counter? And that is why you don't see Transport Monopoly. Because we could have Atlas with a counter. Now this changes. Atlas might not survive into Dawn. I really hope it does. But you know what I mean? Like, that does rotate. Are two transfer monopolies unique? Uh, no. No agenda is functionally unique, but it, use this ability once per turn is per card. If it's not, we'll find out together. But that's my assumption. I'd be really surprised. A lot of times it is on unique cards. So, like, MCA, stuff like that. Yeah, you can use both. Yeah, that checks out. What other card works like that? Like... 
are some of the bad cards like escalate vitriol like that so now if they run hq again right like they do have to go through it again then they run out of botchless counters they can audrey it though and but then if they do that they run border control if we pop the border control though we have no more money like that is the the hard part like they actually can force us to not win this turn yeah not unique as unique yeah just in separate yeah no it, it's per card oh well that's it they had a chance actually there to run HQ again, then run HQ one more time using Audrey. And then if they're forced us to res anything, like if you're expecting this to be a 4-2, the most we can spend is a seamless launch credit advance. So as long as it costs more than three credits, you actually do prolong a turn and it would be an awkward turn for us. So they had a chance to like do something there. Good game. Thanks for the game. I don't really get the theming of what is going on with Shelter. Uh... So it's a it's an animal shelter when a card is installed. So I don't know when the corpse do something, they get some sort of kickback. Maybe it's slightly destructive. I, I think there's a big theme with like connections and, you know, people working together. But this seems to be like a location yeah, for dead drops. So it's not just an animal shelter, but they're using it as a way to like move around information and people and bring people to safety. Why does it make you mill a card? Uh, I don't know. I think it's like a response to like, I would say some sort of corporate damage. Hey. So like the idea that strike fund means like, oh, if the corporation hurts you, if you discard it, if something like bad happens, something tumultuous, it works together to get you money, right? Like that's the idea. Why the strike fund exists when bad things happen, it pushes you forward. Same idea with I've had worse or steel skin scarring happens. When bad thing happens, it pushes you forward. So Lago is the sort of idea is when corps expand, that's a bad thing, but together they can like use it to get some sort of, uh, you know, resources, abilities, cards, options, connections. That's the way I see it. Because it's not so much as an animal shelter, it's just a place that these people are using as a hub. Uh, and animals are cool. I'm looking forward to watching it, back and seeing everything. Hey, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, I uh, there's there's definitely... Uh, how do you say this politely? Because I mean it very politely. It just feels weird to be like, yeah, for sure, you could learn. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> that was even worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, we, uh, we definitely talk through the lines. Uh, uh, these, uh, these sorts of anarch decks are really tricky so the line that they had which is actually really important is he could potentially pr pressure the afshar hippo it down and then this is a server we have to worry about for what it's worth like that's a cool thing about their station is that it wouldn't matter so much that audrey was getting out of control but i think the biggest things we shouted out is like committing to cards earlier like an early hippo that was a click and two credits on turn one or turn two that changes how we play and obviously afshar is getting to that but functionally just slowed down hey catch around eh the price you made say yeah the price is another kind of big one right looks like subliminal is in fact the only hopt netrunner what's hopt peanut eye when are the spoilers for next side good question uh they actually announced it today spoilers are officially starting on the 8th so friday hold on i'll get there yeah spoilers start march 8th so that is next friday so not tomorrow next friday and then the set's out on March 18th. So spoiler week is 10 days. Uh, so soon. Thanks for the game. Hey, William, thanks for the game as well. I just feel like the more obvious for those cards, I had more trouble with seeing cost on that card. Wait, what do you mean cost? The meta theming is the name Pranwa, and it gives me paranoia. I'm stretching for stuff. Oh, man. I legitimately think AAP isn't as bad as it looks. It can pop off if you build around it, and Beanstalk really isn't a bad card. AP would be excellent if there were more ways to get face-up agendas in. Yes, which expendable helps. So I have no doubt the new card coming up is going to do something with it, but check this out. Like, Tehran, this is the issue. Armed Acid Protection is an econ card that scales to be an okay to good econ card in the mid to late game. Generally, how Wayland works is there is no mid to late game. And if there is a card that you want that can just beat the fact that the mid to late game cannot exist, it is too big to fail. Or if you're playing op, obviously extract is busted. But right, like this on its own is a one credit econ card. If you set it up and the runner runs archives to flip up stuff, right? Like how many face ups of different types do you have to have for this to be good? Obviously agendas is really important. That's a really big jump clause. But say that we have an operation, that's not hard to ask. An upgrade, kind of hard to ask. An early Rashida hard, not that hard to ask. That's three different types. So this is pay to gain five, sorry, gain six. So in the mid to late game, when this has a chance of being better, it is just a cheap, sure gamble, which again, comparing that to too big to fail or extract is really, really rough. So you need a way to consistently either rip things off the top of your deck wantonly and they have to still be face up 
which is like still kind of hard. So none of your abilities are going to do it. Or even in a combo deck, like the ceiling for this, like what's the most you can get from this? Agenda, upgrade, asset, uh, operation. So agenda is three. That's a really big jump. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. So most of the click for seven. <laughs> and unfortunately that's too big to fail right now, right? Like that's the thing. Econ cards are best played immediately so that you can play the game very quickly when the runner in theory is the strongest and the weakest. Boarding control for ice? Yeah, boarding control for ice is okay. I think AAP is great in OB. Chris, how's it going? I think I would rather play Sure Gamble and obviously um, extract sooner than armed asset protection very, very quickly. And there's even a bunch of op decks that are not playing three copies of, of hedge fund. I don't know if I said sure gamble or not. So like, that's the issue. It's like economy cards that scale into the mid to late game, they have to be really, really busted to be good. So like the last one that we saw with like this, which was banned luckily is mash comms, which is like in the mid to late game, if you're playing the most dirtily awful deck is like click for 14. That is a sort of card that's worth scaling into, but like click for five, click for seven for two is actually not that much better than like even just going out of your way to play um a uh, government subsidy right so like there's just so many things that it doesn't compare well to so i agree that this card is only good if there's consistently agendas face up in archives and money matters and to me that just screams punitive so it's possible if you can build a deck that rips cards off the top of the deck and cares about five threes and cares about economic difference punitive 100 percent. and i have no doubt that we're going to see more stuff like that coming in the future because it inherently is like what Expendable is screaming at. Max once per turn rather than limit once per turn. Oh, Power Guy, sorry. I'm not sure what you're responding to on the agenda. Okay. Oh, lights are off. Hold on. We got to close this. HPT is a Yu-Gi-Oh term. Hard once per turn. Oh, okay. Usability of a copy of this card once per turn. I don't think there's anything like that in Netrunner. One week to go. Yeah, it's really soon. Subliminal is a hard once per turn because it's not just once per turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, because Subliminal says other copies of this that you've played. So you can play as many Subliminals as you want, but it's bad. Um, I'm not sure if there's other cards like that. I feel like Strike Fund and cards like that, and I've had worse. It's more obvious what's happening here. I literally don't understand what's happening with the Shelter. It's costing you card. I think it's, yeah, response to bad things happening. You don't list ice. 3 plus 5 plus 2 asset is 8 profit. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think 8 profit is that great. Did you just call BTL awful? Yeah, I think it's awful to play against. There's some connections that's fun to think out why they work, but I always they do. But shelter is a big shrug. Yeah, I get it. I think shrug, uh, shelter is a bit more of a stretch. I think the fact that it's an animal shelter isn't exactly helping. Like, I think it's cool theme, but I, I, I agree. I think there could be a location that's a bit more obviously thematic with the mechanics. Okay. Oh, I see. The hard ones return thing. I have a punitive startup deck, but it's in Chinteki, so Hansei beats out AAP. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't think... How much influence is this? Like, it's probably a fair bit of influence anyways. I don't think you play this out of faction. Uh, two is not the worst, but, like, you can do better for two, I think. Hansei's really good. Hansei's really good. Hansei kind of doesn't work with this because it's not face up, but, yeah, it's face down. Okay, we're gotten late. We got to shut this one down, unfortunately. Um, But no worries. I want to give a huge shout out again to names here. These are just some of the patrons, mind you. Uh, hey, there's the new hedgehog. Um, Firstly... If you want to support the channel, we are supported almost entirely on Patreon. You can find the link below. It is the way that I'm allowed to put as much time as I am into Netrunner, which is an absolute treat. So uh, thank you so much for all the people that support. These are just some of the names. These are Sure Gambles and uh, Daily Cast. Sorry, let me try that again. Degree Mill and Sure Gamble patrons that have been supporting the channel. There's a lot of people supporting at the Daily Cast levels. Thank you so much to everyone who can support the channel. Um, if you want to support the channel non-financially as well, just liking the video, sharing, subscribing, all that stuff helps a heck of a lot. So thank you so much. Also, if you do see your name here and you want to get like a little symbol next to your name, hit me up on Discord and we'll get it in there. It's always quite fun. Two influence for your digital life. Just saying, yeah, that one's good too. Going to bed at 5 a.m. worth it for the Thursday stream. Yo, Lucille, hopefully you're doing okay. Get some sleep, huh? Thanks for the great stream. Hey, cheers, Lucas. Thanks so much for hanging out. On that note, we'll be back on Tuesday. Hopefully we'll get out a video of just probably some Arasana gameplay. Yeah, it seems like... It's fun enough, and that should be it. Again, stay tuned to spoilers. Things are going to be happening soon, not only on this channel, of course, but on NSG as soon as the 8th, and we'll have all the links to all the stuff we talked about in the description below. I think that's largely it. Take care of yourself. Uh, good luck if you're playing Sunset this weekend. Hopefully you have a good time. I know Sokka is streaming his side of it. Uh, I think he's playing or just watching. I'm not sure what's happening, but I, I saw a notification, so check out Sokka's channel. It's all good stuff. Take care, y'all.